Let First Lockhart National Bank reward you with First Star Rewards Checking, where you earn on your rewards checking balance, get free ATM refunds nationwide, plus so much more. Come on by one of our locations in Lockhart, Kyle, or South Austin to visit with one of our bankers to see how you can get started earning rewards today. You can also check us out online at firstlockhart.com. <coughs> All right, welcome to Lockhart High School. We are here for Friday Night Lights, Lockhart, Texas style. Tonight is Class 5A, District 14, Division 2. Alamo Heights Mules come to town. They are 5-1 and one on the season, 3-0 and oh in district play. Their head coach is Mike Norman. On the other side, the good guys. Lockhart Lions come in at 3-3 three and three overall. They're 1-2 and two in district play. And, of course, Brian Herman is our head coach, and he runs the infamous slot T offense. Our team tonight. We've got the Rock and Rev, Randy Fry oh. from Missouri, doing the QA for us tonight. We love you, Randy. We're glad you're with us. And I bet you it's warmer up there than it is down here right now. Giving a shout-out to McKelty Altier, our senior production person. Without her, we could not be on the air because she is the only one in this room that has brains. And that's the guy that's moving the camera around. <laughs> That's Emilio, the Sarge Juarez. He is our color commentator, the stats. The, he does everything. He does it all, and he's the good-looking one. And then myself, Scott Smith, doing play-by-play -play as we're here getting ready for what is a game that Lockhart is going to have to win tonight. So before we even get started, we've got folks that I'm just going to – I'm giving a shout-out to. You might be able to see them over the shoulder, but we've got people here from Kansas that are with us. This is my family behind us, and they're just here to kind of watch and see how Texas football is done. <laughs> I'm going to give a shout-out to my mother and father who are sitting there with their two ridiculous dogs listening to this game. Uh, we may come over and see you folks over the weekend. We're still waiting for you know money offers, but we may come over and see you. And then one more that we might have that I don't know if she's listening or not, but my aunt Donna Cock from Topeka, Kansas is supposedly listening. And I'm sorry you're here to listen to this broadcast. But anyways, that's our team for tonight. Again, we couldn't do this without McKelty. We couldn't do it without Randy. We appreciate you all. And uh, I've kind of told you about what we've done as far as the teams coming in. Now I'm going to hand it off to this my sidekick, the main man, the Sarge. Sarge, take it over. Uh, good evening, everybody. Welcome to tonight's broadcast, the uh, First Lockhart National Bank pregame show. And before I get, I get started, I want to give a shout-out to one person, uh, my uh, oldest granddaughter Eliza turns eight years old today, and uh, I didn't get to get I didn't get to get to the stadium till about six o'clock because we we're having a little birthday celebration. But she understands that Grandpa got to come over here and do his thing. So, you know, happy birthday, baby girl! And I'll be home later on to give you eight spankings for your birthday as soon as this game's over with. But tonight, Scott, as you mentioned, this is a critical game for the Lockhart Lions, as you know. They went into Bernie Champion last week against an 0-2 team in district. But like we mentioned before that game, Bernie Champion was the best 0-2 team in the state when it comes to district play. So, and, and it showed as Bernie Champion was able to uh, to defeat Lockhart Lions. I think it was like 55-23. to 23. But tonight, Alamo Heights comes into Lockhart. And for many of those that remember about three years ago, the last time Alamo Heights came into the stadium, we were sitting on the other side of the stadium. And Lockhart ended up coming out with a victory on a, you know, on a very exciting game that took place that night. And that game eventually led to Alamo Heights missing the playoffs while Lockhart was able to sneak into the fourth and final playoff spot for that year. So it's going to be a huge game tonight. We got Lo It's a youth night as well as a junior high night here for the Lockhart Lions as the seventh and eighth graders are going to be recognized for their, uh, for their playing time there at the Lockhart Junior High as well as the CFPO and the Pop Warner Football League that they like to uh, acknowledge every year because you know this is the future of Lockhart right here that they're going to be that, that's about to be coming out here pretty soon as they get recognized and a lot of these guys that are playing here in the varsity level they remember when they were that young and they were being recognized before the game as the game start come up so it's going to be a good night all the way around and you know I was hoping for a little rain to slow down this quarterback but. This quarterback that Alamo Heights has, as well as the two receivers, the Proctor brothers, as we all remember from a couple of years ago as, you know, when we played at Alamo Heights last year. So it's going to be an exciting game, but one that definitely Lockhart needs to come in and they need to control the game from the get-go. And I, as much as I hate to say it, it almost has to be a shootout 
and they have to stop their offense more than what Alamo Heights has to stop our offense. All right, well, and just real quick, we're going to take a commercial break, and we'll come back with all of the interviews that we had tonight. So uh, we're going to let McKelty take us to a commercial break. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports through Vibe Magazine. Dr. Peterson and his staff at Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic are here to serve you. We've been voted best chiropractor and best chiropractor's office for five years running. Are you bothered by headaches, back pain, or neck pain? Call Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic at 512-668-4163 to make your appointment. Mention this ad to receive a consultation, exam, and x-rays if needed for only $20. Call 512-668-4163 and begin your journey to hope, healing, and health. All right, we're back here at Lockhart Stadium, and we're going to go ahead and get things set up here. I'm going to get uh, Coach Herman's interview out of the way. Then we're going to hand the, the court off and let Emilio get his interview out of the way from uh, the middle school coach. Coach Hitter. And then I'm going to go get the, <laughs> the thing back <laughs> and get all the players that we got before the game. So we're going to have a little tennis match yes. with the ox cord here. <laughs> so I, I am, am obviously not as good as Emilio with uh, getting Coach to talk for a long time, but this is what Coach Brian Herman had to say about tonight's game. This is Scott Smith, Lion Country Broadcast Network, KMAX Sports, Duvite Magazine. I'm here with the head coach, Brian Herman. Coach Herman, um, we're going to go right in to make this quick and simple for you before the game. Uh, what is the game plan or what are your goals tonight as far as stopping Alamo Heights Mules? Defensively, we have to be real sharp. They, they do a lot of different things, but they do them very well. Uh, they run a couple uh, double screens. They run option. Um, zone and jet and they run a bunch of different things but they do it extremely well they're very efficient they've got some dynamic playmakers um, so we have to be very sound in our responsibilities and most importantly we got to tackle well we didn't tackle well last week all right and you know not even going back to the last game but again that's one of the things we saw as well was the tackling and I'm sure you've worked that out through practices my second question pretty much uh, how do you feel like the guys have done? I know we're three and three overall, one and two in district play. How do you feel like they played to this point? Up to the point, you know, it's been improvement each week. You know, it's hard to say that after last week's loss, but uh, I'm really proud of the way they came out this week and really put last week behind them. Uh, they didn't let it linger throughout the week. They they turned their sights on to Alamo Heights, um, and, and we did some cool things this week in practice to prepare. You know, we upped the intensity a little bit. You know, one of our coaches said. You know, we can either be healthy or we can be good. So we banged a little bit more this week than we have in the past. And, uh, you know, just kind of up the spirits of the kids. And, uh, you know, if, if the tackling improves and, and we're a little more efficient offensively, you know, I feel good about where we're at. Awesome. Then the last question, and we obviously know what the ultimate goal is, and that's to be playing or practicing for, during Thanksgiving. But what are the goals for the remainder of the year? Well, I... In order to get to that goal, that ultimate goal of practice and play on Thanksgiving, is that uh, we pretty much have to win out. Um, you know, at least the majority of the rest of our ball games, and you know, we have two home games and two road games, and uh, you know, nothing's more important than this one right now. All right, Coach, I appreciate your time. I know you're a busy man. Good luck to you, and thank you very much. Thank you. Go Lions. All right. Well, that was Coach Herman. And that's what he had to say about tonight's game. And now we're going to hand it off and we're going to go to the middle school uh, coach down there. And then we'll get to the players. Here's Emilio. Yes, once again, this is uh, the first Lockhart National Bank pregame show. And I had a chance to interview Coach Hitter, who is a coach, head coach of the eighth grade football team, both A and B team, just as they called him out to the field. And here's how the interview went yesterday afternoon with Coach Hitter. All right, welcome. This is a special Christ Market Coaches Edition for uh, Friday Night Football. This is Thursday night. This is the middle of Sarge Waters, and I'm here with the head coach of the eighth grade football team, Coach Hitter. How are you doing, Coach? I'm good. How are you doing? All right. First of all, thanks for doing this interview. We, we know uh, tomorrow night at the high school field is going to be a uh, uh, junior high night for these young men. So, But to start off, give us a little background of yourself, and what is your assignments for Friday night football games? Yes, sir. So this is my fourth year in Lockhart. Uh, they've all, my football uh, years have been at the junior high. Um, I was born and raised in Lockhart. Um, and on Friday nights, um, I'm up in the press box on a headset with the offense, watching the, the far side of the line, um, and also charting down plays so we can put that in uh, in the morning for film. Uh, study. All right. Uh, you're the head coach of the 8th grade A team and B team. 
Uh, talk about your key players on the A team. Uh, yes, sir. So it's been an outstanding year for both teams. Uh, our A team is right now they're f- uh, 4-0, um, and our uh, B team is now 2-0. Um, as far as our key players, um, our backfield for our A team has been uh, very good. Uh, it consists of Sean McKinney, uh, Deontay Jackson, and uh, Lawrence Castillo. They've been carrying us pretty well, um, and I'm pretty excited that we, you know, we have three quarterbacks that can all do the job well. Um, our B team, uh, same thing. We, we've got two really good quarterbacks. Uh, uh, Andrew Treadway and uh, your son Alex Juarez, uh, he stepped up and, and carried a role and it's really helped us out. Uh, Sean Mendez has been very well. And both sides, both uh, teams, our line has is, is, is played their butts off all year. So I'm pretty excited about the future for Lockhart High School. Definitely. All right, this coming up week, Lockhart will be playing Bastrop here at the Lockhart Junior High School, fo- at the Junior High football field. Talk about this big game, which could possibly determine who will be the district champs at the end of the season. Yeah, so last year, I think uh, the A team, it came down to a, uh, that was the de facto uh, district championship game. And I think uh, the rain got in the way of it last year. So uh, I know the kids are hungry. They're ready. Um, they know it's a big game. And, I, you know, we've been, been preaching stay focused, uh, be coachable, um, and understand, you know, that every, everyone knows, you know, that you've got you've got the target on your back because, you know, you're the, y'all, you and Bastard are the top dogs. Um, so they're really focused, and they're, both teams are ready to go um, and get a win for uh, against Bastrop. Definitely. Okay, Friday night for the varsity football team against Alamo Heights, like we mentioned, will be junior high night for the for these 8th uh, graders and 7th graders uh, football team. What will you say to these young lines before they take the field to be announced? Um, tell them, you know, this is soak it in. This is... When you when next year or a couple years after that, you know you're gonna you're gonna be dressed suiting out in a varsity uniform under the bright lights on Friday nights. Uh, so soak it in. Um, this is this is a great honor to be recognized in front of the whole community um, on a Friday night in a with a big game on the line here against Alamo Heights. All right, real quick, if you can describe the eighth grade Lockhart Lions football teams, what word would you best describe it and why? Uh, I think determined comes to mind. Um, they, like I said, they know that targets on their back. Both teams, because um, they played very well last year, um, so they've been determined every single day they come out to practice. They worked extremely hard. Um, they've done uh, worked very hard during the athletic periods to get in shape. Uh, and so I think determined is a really good word to describe both both that whole or that whole eighth grade group. Yes. All right. When the final whistle blows to end the eighth grade football season and these young men move on to the high school level, what is the one thing that you hope they will take with them that you have that they have learned from you as their coach? Um, I would hope that they they continue to work as hard as they have uh, these past two years and to be coachable, um, soak it in as much as they can, um, because these next four years are going to go by quick. I remember when I was in high school, they go by quick. So staying coachable um, and staying on the right track and and uh, and keep working hard. All right, Coach, before we end this, is there anybody you would like to give a shout-out to or say hi to? Uh, I'd like to give a shout-out to my family. Um, and I'd also like to give a shout-out to any former players that I had um, and any players that might be listening tomorrow. So go Lions. Uh, definitely. All right, Coach. Well, thank you very much for this interview, and uh, you, did a, you did a fantastic job. Right. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right, Coach. All right, once again, this was a special edition of the Christ Market Coaches Corner with uh, Coach Hitter, head coach of the 8th grade football team, and this is Emilio Sarge Waters. And uh, we'll get right back to you with more action. And once again, that was Coach Hitter, the head coach of the Lockhart Lions 8th grade A team and B team football team. As you mentioned, both squads are undefeated in uh, in play so far. But also throw in there the 7th grade team that both A and B teams, they're undefeated as well too. So coming up from the Lockhart Junior High uh, areas where the 7th grade and 8th graders, you know, they're, if you put all the uh, records combined together, they're about 12 and 0 right now. So we got a good crop of young men coming up, and uh, as we see, seventh graders and eighth graders lined up right there. You know, we got a lot of a good group of kids coming up that's going to be playing varsity football in the next couple of years for these lines. So I'll pass the ox court back to Scott Smith, and it's in your court. <laughs> All right. So we had a few guys talking, and none of them were very talkative tonight. I think the the sophomore was the only one that was pretty talkative. But I'm going to start out with Georgie or George Renteria. He's a junior defensive player who's had an outstanding season for us as a defensive back and getting up there and sticking people and and doing just a great job in coverage. This is not a long interview, Dad, so you're going to have to make sure you listen. Here's what George had to say tonight. This is Scott Smith, Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports. I'm here with junior George Renteria. Have been having a great season for us on the defensive side of the ball for sure. George, how has your junior year gone for you? 
Uh, it's going pretty good. I'm doing stuff that I wanted to be doing and I'm just trying to improve more. All right, my second question for you is, what are your goals for the remainder of the season? Uh, to get better than what I am and make the playoffs. Good answer. And the final, the final answer here I have, or the thing I have for you is, who do you want to give a shout out to? I'd like to give a shout out to Coach Clay. All right, well, I appreciate that and good luck tonight, George. Thank you, sir. Good luck. And as I said, he didn't have a whole lot to say, but he, when he, he got through it, and, and uh, I was glad to have him on there. The next guy was almost as, a, as talkative, and I understand he's not much very talkative when he's in school either, and that is senior running back Darius Spruill. And here's what Darius had to say as he talked for one second longer than George did, and here's what he had to say. This is Scott Smith with Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports through Vibe Magazine. I'm here with senior Darius Spruill, who's one of the running backs for this football team. Darius, how's your senior year gone for you? It's gone pretty well, and I hope to continue that. Very good. Now, the big thing is, what are your goals? What do you want to accomplish for the rest of your senior year? Well, after football, I hope to make region and track and field for pole vault. Very good. Awesome. All right. And the last one, this is the easy one. Who do you want to give a shout out to? I'd like to give a shout out to my Uncle Bobby in North Texas and my cousin Jalen Guyton at UNT. All right. Well, there was Darius Spruill, senior running back. Darius, good luck tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. And that was Darius. So now we move on to the third one. The third one was fun. This was Isaiah Samaripa. He's not a big guy. Right? He's actually the biggest guy we have. But he's a junior defensive lineman and offensive lineman, and uh, I teased him a little bit before we got started, and we had a pretty fun interview, and he was two seconds longer than the guy before him. This is Scott Smith of the Lion Country Broadcast Network, KMAX Sports and Vibe Magazine. I'm here with Isaiah Semaripa, who is a junior defensive lineman and offensive lineman. First of all, Isaiah, what, how has your junior year gone for you? It's going great. Thought, I thought we were going to win more, but it's going great. Yeah, let's about it yeah all right and as far as your goals for the remainder of the season what do you want to get accomplished get more pancakes we get about 50 that's about it right there all right and finally who do you want to give a shout out to tonight shout out to my brother because he taught me everything i know that is awesome well isaiah i i appreciate your time tonight i wish you luck and thank you for the interview <laughs> thank you too <laughs> All right, and that was Isaiah, and I got to say that was maybe the funnest interview I've had this year. I really appreciated that one. He was an outstanding defensive lineman and an offensive lineman as well. So uh, I'm pretty sure Lorenzo taught him a lot of those pancake blocks. I hope he was talking about pancake blocks, right? I think okay, so. Because now I'm, I'm hungry. Sure. I want some pancakes <laughs> now. So, well, <laughs> so the, the next guy, and here's one that was thrown to the wolves basically by injury. And uh, sophomore and my neighbor, Jackie Edwards Jr., he's our starting quarterback and quite a quarterback he has become. He actually had the longest uh, interview of the night, so I was pretty proud of him, but he had some good words. This is Scott Smith, Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports with Vibe Magazine. I am here with sophomore starting quarterback Jackie Edwards Jr., so, Jackie, your first question for this this uh, interview is pretty much, how's your sophomore year going, and what's it like to all of a sudden be thrust into the starting position? Well, my sophomore year, it's going pretty good. I feel like we have a really good chance of winning this game and going into playoffs. I'm just very blessed. I just want to give honor to God for putting me in a situation and me producing very good. All the training I've done, too. Very good. All right. Second question. Again, it's, you know, you're a sophomore, so I'm, you know you may have thought of this, maybe you haven't, but what are your goals for the, yourself and the team the rest of the year? Well, I would like to help the team win more games and just become a leader out here so I can develop more leadership for my senior year so we can go out with a bang. Sounds good. And the last one's the easy one. Who do you want to give a shout-out to? I want to shout out my parents to change the face of the barbershop, my boy Lex, be helping me look fresh for the games and everything. <laughs> All right. Well, there is your sophomore starting quarterback, Jackie Edwards Jr. Jackie, thank you and good luck. Thank you. you too. Junior, and, and you know, I've had some good interviews. I really liked his because his first answers to his question were pretty in depth and and meaningful there. And you know, as he got along, he got a little more relaxed and started cutting it up a little bit. But those were the interviews from the guys tonight, and. Uh, 
just having a good time talking with him. We've almost gotten through two-thirds of the roster. We're trying to hit every single guy that's on the roster and playing right now, and we're getting there. I've got several seniors I want to try to hit our next home game and maybe knock a few of them out while we're on the road. Um, we're about eight minutes and 50 seconds away from the start of this game, and something I want to talk about before we go into commercial breaks is Emilio hit on it. We're almost looking at mirror images of each other when it comes to who's important. Um, we were talking, and the, I guess one of the best linebackers in the state of Texas for them is uh, Mackie Carabin. He's a senior. He's number 44. They said you'll see him all over the field. He's a man amongst boys out there. And I remember him from last year. He put on some vicious hits. And they've got some pretty big boys. But whereas we have our dynamic duo and the Ellison brothers, they have their brothers both in the same class, senior and junior. Both are fast. But the big thing is number 21, Nick Proctor, not only is he fast, but he's tall and strong, and he's the go-to guy. And Aaron Proctor is so athletic. He just, I mean, yeah. he's just amazing. And then you throw in Reed Anderson, their quarterback, and thank goodness two of those guys will be gone after this year. But all three of those guys are people we better be ready to play against. Um, we've got a guy that normally starts for us who's not going to be in there tonight that's going to kind of hurt us in the defensive back position, but we are pretty deep in the defensive back yes, area. That, that we are. So, yeah, as uh, Emilio said, we're, we're hitting, we're fast on defense. We just need to clean up the tackling a little bit because like, last game, like Coach said, we just didn't <laughs> tackle well. This is a big game tonight. We really need to get a win because – if we don't win at least three of the last four games, we're probably not going to make the playoffs. Right. So, and we got to get some help. We need some help as well. And anytime someone goes up against Medina Valley, you got to stop that monster in the backfield. I mean, that kid is amazing. Yeah. So before uh, we go to a commercial break, I'm going to let Emilio give some thoughts before he uh, of the pregame and whatnot, and then we're going to take some commercials and get our sponsorships. Yes, in. definitely. Before the Lions come out of their tunnel, I want to give a Mightler Storage game break. For action going on tonight for District 14, 5A Division 2. In Medina Valley, there are the Panthers are hosting the Uvalde Coyotes at Panther Stadium. At Antler Stadium, it is Memorial Minutemen traveling from San Antonio to Kerrville to take on the Antlers. Kennedy Rockets travel to Bernie ISD Stadium, where we were at last year, to take on the champion Chargers. And last and not least, here at Lions Stadium is the Alamo Heights Mules travel into Lion Country to take on your Lockhart Lions and once again this is a huge game for the Lions and uh, you know Alamo Heights has practically already written themselves into the playoffs as they're one of the top three teams in the district alongside Tyvee and Medina Valley and they all have the same record so you know it's just gonna it's it's gonna be that battle for that fourth and final spot if uh, even if Lockhart wins tonight they're still gonna have to battle in for that fourth and final spot we'll need a little help but you know, this Friday Night Lights, anything could happen as just like it did three years ago. I know we got different players on both sides, but, you know, the feel of this game is almost like a playoff feel as it is anyway because it's like Lockhart has to continue to keep winning to get into that second season. Once they get into that second season, then they could go from there. But it's about getting to that season first, to, the, to that second season. So, And it starts here tonight here at Lions Stadium here in about 5.30 minutes before kickoff time. And it looks like they're getting ready to line up to do the national anthem. And uh, we'll go ahead and cut off our mics and uh, turn up your mic so you could listen to the national anthem.
All right, well, we're back. We're ready to go here. We're about ready to start this thing to where we can uh, see the in the booth because it gets a little bright in here and then the glass glares on us. But we are about two minutes and 50 seconds away from kickoff. We haven't had the usual, uh, Emilio calls this every game, where Herman does his usual thing and we defer and get the ball in the second half. We'll see if that happens tonight. I still don't see why we even do that because it's almost automatic every time they do it to where Lockhart will kick off to start the game and then return to start the second half. So, you know, it's I guess it's just for the show. <laughs> well, um, a real quick shout out to my man um, who's listening to us and he's also watching our incredibly awesome volleyball team. And that is uh, Rudy Cadillo. He's the man who gives me the scores. He said the freshman girls won, the JV girls won convincingly, and the varsity girls are warming up right now to uh, get the game going. Also, I wanted to give a shout-out to Abby Ruggio, who is a senior player for us. She's actually uh, been nominated as one of the top players in the area, and so people have been voting for her. And if you can get on Facebook and – find that it's it's kind of bouncing around there on the Facebook page to find the uh, link where you can actually put it in and vote for her as the best player in the area and now we're going through the uh, captains out there talking to each other and and then we'll find out if Emilio is right all right yeah and as soon as we let you know who's going to be receiving the ball who's going to be kicking off which I'll go ahead and say Lockhart's <laughs> going to be kicking the ball Alamo Heights be returning the ball to start the game we just don't know which way they're going to be going left or right but as soon as this kick this coin toss is over with we're going to be shutting it down for lace from facebook live on the lion country broadcast network go to that page look for this look for the link for tonight's game click on it and you'll be able to hear the rest of this game live through the lion country broadcast network and kmac sports and as well as fight magazine so see or why do we? Why I, do I, we don't, do it? I don't know. I'm right again. I'm right again. So with that, we're gonna cut this set, this uh, live feed out. Click on the link and get ready to listen to, to your Lockhart Lions as they take on the Alamo Heights Mules here at Lions Stadium in Lockhart, Texas. I wish Larry Rodriguez didn't get so excited about these games. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's. Uh, I'm gonna have to talk to him about that. <laughs> no, Larry's Larry's a good guy. He definitely you is. Know, and it, you know what? And it, like I said, he does that so the coaches and the players don't have to do it. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, true. That's that's basically what the PA guy is to keep the crowd pumped up as the game goes on. So, you know, as you see it at several times, several places, to where we've had the coaches or the players turn around and try and get the crowd pumped up. You know, Larry Rodriguez has been do doing an amazing job for the home games throughout the season so far. And uh, it looks like uh, he, hopefully he'll be continuing to do that for as long as he's able to. Well, uh, their dynamic duo is back in the Proctor brothers. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to have our usual, I call him the toe poker, and this is uh, going to be um, Edward Ponce going to be kicking off, the junior. He's got tree trunks for legs. I haven't heard anything from Rudy Cadillo yet, so they must not have started down there. And we're about ready to start this action and get this thing going. As a matter of fact, the clock has started and we haven't kicked the ball. There we go. It's over the head of uh, Aaron Proctor. Goes in the end zone. So Mr. Toe Poker, with the wind in his back, sticks it through the back of the end zone. And it'll be the Alamo Heights Mules taking over first and 10 from their own 25-yard line. And this is where it's going to get exciting as uh, you have the Proctor boys to watch out for. And then you have their tremendous quarterback back there in Reed Anderson. Yes, definitely. And Alamo Heights runs uh, – that's a problem – you know, a big thing that Lockhart faces throughout this district is this high pace offense or high power offense that is real quick to get up to the line of scrimmage to run the next play. And, of course, we're going to probably butcher this name, Joshua Zanaga. And there goes Reed in, uh, around the outside as he takes a, the shotgun snap and just runs around the right side, picks up about five. And, again, I'm hoping not to butcher the name too badly. I think we may just kind of go with him as Joshua tonight. Yeah. But that is definitely, I remember him as well. He is quite a fast running back. 
uh, triple, re triple receivers to the left, one to the right. They're going to come out throwing. The ball is complete. He gets a nice block. He's around to the 35, out to the 38, gets hit hard out of bounds. That's and who? A big yardage on the, on the run. That was Devin Clark that introduced himself to him, and they get a first and 10, and the pass was to Weston Davis. So, again, we're trying to get all their kids in line, and we know our kids. We just got to learn all theirs real quick. So here we are, trips to the left. They're going to throw to the right. It's it's a nice catch. It's in the backfield, and we're there. Oh, they said he did not catch it. I was going to say, that was a great catch by the receiver who had to pretty much shoestring shoe it as the quarterback, as the Reed Anderson threw it at his feet, but it looked like it was going to be incomplete, so it's going to be second down and 10 with 11.39 here in the first quarter. So we have, uh, as he said, second and 10. They're going to have the one receiver, which is uh, – the big Proctor out to the right. That's the senior, Nick. They're in a tight formation. He says they run a lot of uh, like an option out of this offense as well. There's the man in motion. That's Aaron Proctor around the right side. Cuts it back up. He gets hit immediately. He might have got a yard. And great, great tackle. He got hit hard on the play too. Faustino. Faustino he's, Gonzalez. He's never in the play. Nah, he's, he just plugs yeah, he, that he, hole he, up. He did an excellent job. Just sticking the receipt, the, the runner Proctor, and uh, making this making a solid tackle. So it is now third and eight. Two receivers to the left, two to the right, one running back, and we'll call him again, Joshua. As not to Zanaga is the only thing I can come up with is that last name. They're gonna pass. Third and eight. He's going deep. He's looking for Nick Proctor, and he catches it in stride. What a pass! They say he is down, and he's going to be inside the 20. He got down to the 17-yard line, and they're, as soon as the sticks are set, they're going to be running. This, this is the way they played us last year, great catch, by, great catch by Proctor right there. We had a couple of line defenders saying that he dropped the ball, but great catch as he positioned himself perfectly in front of the, the defenders. Three receivers, they're going right up the middle with Joshua Zanaga as he's going to gain close to five. He gets inside the 15-yard line down to about the 12. Nice run at the middle. Good, good delay handoff there. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Reed is not messing around here. So he's going to look to pass. It's a lob up into the end zone. Proctor going for it, but he's out of the end zone. Nick, Nick Proctor's got to be one of the best athletes that we face every year. Yes, exactly. And, you know, it it doesn't get any lesser when you have his brother in there in the mix as well, too. So if you got one Proctor, you got to get the – you got to make sure you got the other one covered, too. So I just got an update. Rudy Cadillo tells me that the Lady Lions are up 11-3 to over Lanier right now at Lanier High School. Thank you, Rudy. Two receivers to the left, one to the right, and we jumped off sides. It's a free play. They're going to call it dead. As we, Eddie Tukar was a little excited about trying to kill the quarterback, and he was about 10 yards off sides. Yeah, and you know, Eddie Tukar is one of the, probably one of the best defensive linemen or defensive backs that we got here for the Lockhart Lions. And, you know, he wants to get in there. He wants to make this stop. He, does, he doesn't want these... Uh, Alamo Height Mules to get the first jump on the low car lines. So it's going to be third and one. And what, two cars been playing what? What is it, fourth grade he's been starting for the varsity? Something like that. Pretty much, yeah. Guy, he's a, he's a, man, a man child. He's, he's a man, man child, child yeah. himself. Our 44, their 44. <laughs> we got the Proctors and the Ellisons. This is like mirror images. There's a handoff up the middle of Zanaga. Oh, nice spin move. Gets hit hard. And it looked like it was Sosa there to make the initial hit. Alex Sosa. It's going to be first and goal or at the five-yard line. They're still moving on us. Trips to the left. Single receiver to the right. Zignaga up the middle, and he gets to the end zone. Does, does, nope, they're going to say he's a yard shy. And it looks he's like. going to be right at the goal line. Faustino in there again. As they're rushing for the play again, it's pretty much going to be a run up the middle once again. Yep, there it is, and he's in. Great. Almost almost untouched. Yeah, great cutback by Zanaga as they were coming over the left side of the offensive line, and he was able to make a quick cutback into a huge hole that their offensive line created on the right side and gets into the end zone practically untouched like Scott said. So Joshua gets a one-yard touchdown run, and now who is kicking for him? I cannot see the number. That is number two, which is Seth Ellis. So the I think it's the exact same kicker from last year. 
Yeah, it is. It's the same one. Yeah, yeah, he made that by about 50 yards. That was a nice kick. So with that, it's going to be Alamo Heights taking the early lead over the Lockhart Lions with 9 minutes, 38 seconds left to go here in the first quarter. Is the Mule 7, Lion 0, and we'll take a quick break. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMX Sports through Bright Magazine. Chisholm Trail Barbecue. Feature slow-cooked brisket, hot sausage, beef, and pork ribs done the right way. In a town famous for barbecue, Chisholm Trail is where the locals come to eat. Visit Chisholm Trail Barbecue, 1323 South Colorado in Lockhart, and come by after the game. Chisholm Trail Barbecue stays open until midnight after every home football game. All right, we're back here at Lockhart High School in the stadium, and I'm looking real quick because I have a feeling Rudy has some information for me. Let's look. Nope, it's still the same information, so I'll move on from that. That did not take them long. They marched it, right down the field. They did. They took all of nine plays, 75 yards on the drive, and ended with a one-yard touchdown run by Joshua. And I won't even try to mention his last name, but, you know, great job by the Alamo Heights Mule to get down, which was cap, you know, which was led by that huge pass play from Anderson to Proctor. So we've got Caleb Jennings and Aldania deep, the Ellison brothers in front. It's a high kick. Daytron Ellison from the 17 gets hit from behind. He cuts up. Oh, that's Daquan. He stays on his feet, gets out to about the 28-yard line. His own guy about knocked him down, but he stayed on his feet. So we'll have first and 10 for our own 28-yard line. 9.33 to go here in the first quarter. Alamo Heights on top, 7-0. And one thing I mentioned, I didn't get to mention during the first Lockhart National Bank pregame show, Scott, is, you know, for Lockhart Lions to be successful against Alamo Heights Mule, they can't have just one runner, one running back being uh, being very productive. They got to have two of them in the dynamic duel. Okay, so they're going to go tie formation. It's Aldania around the left side. He's going to get about a yard before he is manhandled there, and that was number 17 making the stick, and that's Trevon Godley. And I'm thinking I've got some more information. Rudy Cadillo tells me it's 16 to seven. Lady Lions in volleyball on top of Lanier. So to be, how did it go to fourth down already? It is second and nine. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> second and nine from the 20, looks like 27. They're going to give it up the middle. And there's around the corner to, oh, goodness. Was that, I don't even know who that one was. Oh, that was David Garcia. Yeah, David Garcia, yeah. Wow, David Garcia with a nice run there. Picks up about five on the carry. Going to make it third, nah, about four, third and six. Ball be at the 31-yard line. And, you know, David Garcia is, is a surprise running back at the moment because he usually doesn't come in until later on in the ball game. But for him to come in at this time and for him to get the ball probably caught Alamo Heights off guard. And here they go, Daquan Ellison around the left side. Oh, goodness, there's that linebacker we talked about. Nice play there by number 44, Mackie Carabin. And that'll bring up fourth down in about five as we didn't get anything out of that. May have lost a yard. Yeah, we did lose a yard on that play where it'd be fourth down and six. It looks like the punt team's going to be coming out for the Lions. And it's going to be interesting to see who their punter's going to be because usually for the last few weeks it's been Daytron Ellison. It's going to be um, – Looks like, looks like Alfredo Hymas. Yeah, coming the out sophomore the is sophomore is going to punt. And I'm already looking out there. We are outsized for sure tonight against their defense. Hymas is punt. It's a bad shanked punt to the right. It's going to take, take a line bounce. It does take a line bounce. It's going to be at about the 49 yard line of Lockhart where they'll take over first and 10. We'll take a real quick commercial break. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports through Bright Magazine. For over 15 years, Rain and Drywall and Paint has been serving Lockhart and the surrounding counties. We are experienced in all phases of construction. You can count on us for any exterior or interior painting job. Call 512-925-0634 to schedule an appointment with Rain and Drywall and Paint today. All right, we're back here at Lockhart Stadium. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. They're going to go to the bubble screen. It's caught at the 48. He gets around the corner. He's down to the 45. They throw him down at about the 43. Nice gain there by number eight. That is Weston Davis. So they run a lot of those bubble screens. 
They're going to mark it down at the 42-yard line. It's going to be a pickup of seven. And, yes, definitely, that was a bubble screen right there. This is the third one that they've ran already so far. But there was their second uh, completion of it. The first one was an was a incomplete pass. So three receivers to the left, one to the right, single back, handoff right up the middle. Zanaga gets – whoa, look at that. That look, almost looked like Daytron Ellis in there as he <laughs> jumped our defender. That's going to move the sticks as he gets down to about the 36-yard line. He is like a Dave Meggett from the New York Giants back in the old days. Yes, definitely. And Alex Sosa with the tackle right there. And uh, Sosa is a is a presence in the defensive line for the Lions. Quick out. They get Pro uh, Nick Proctor the ball. He's going to move the sticks again. He just basically ran a button hook, and they hit him right right there as he turned. First down. They're still moving the ball. We haven't had uh, any answer for this offense yet. It's first and ten from the twenty-five. Yes, yeah, great job by Reed to get it out to his receiver. He's in shotgun. He's looking to the right. He's going to throw it over the middle, and that is caught again by number eight, Weston Davis, and they're going to get about seven out of that. Kind of drug or over the middle of the interior of us there, and nice play. Yeah, it looks like the defenders were focusing on the Proctor, one of the Proctor brothers, and uh, – Davis was able to slip in through the drag and get the pass from Reed Anderson. Okay, I see my neighbor, Daniel Bubba Dees, is here. He's got the baby in hand. <laughs> He's walking into the stadium tonight. Hi, Daniel. All right, two receivers to the right, one in motion. They're going to hand – no, they fake the handoff. They go right up the middle of Zignaga. And he's going to be close to a first and ten. This offensive line is blowing us up right now. They definitely are. They, they're able to uh, uh, impose their will on this Lions defense. It's going to be down to the 16, 17-yard line. Third and one. Yep. They're going to hand it off to Zignaga again. He spin moves. He He's quick. He's inside the 15, down to about the 14. He's going to move the sticks again. We're at 5.36 to go here in the first quarter. It's already 7 to nothing, and they're knocking on the door. Coach calls a timeout, so we'll take one. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports through Vibe Magazine. Johnny & Sons Pain Body has been Lockhart's premier collision repair and auto body shop since 1967. Certified I-Car Standard, the highest ranking in the collision industry. For all your collision needs, come by and see Johnny & Sons 400 Blackjack in Lockhart. Johnny & Sons Pain Body, we won't steer you wrong. All right, we're back here at Lockhart Stadium. Uh, my my mom is playing QA on Facebook. I'm sorry, Tanya Lloyd, that you're not able to get the game. I guess she's hers is going in and out. Uh, but everybody else that I've talked to, it looks like that um, we are on live, but Tanya's for some reason is coming in and out. So um, it also got an update from Rudy Cadillo. The girls win the first match 25 to 9 over Lanier. Thank you, Rudy. Here we go in football now. They're going to go around the left side with the option. Reed with a nice oh. spin move gets up ended there by number five, Alex Thompson, the junior. And once again, Faustino Gonzalez is there to, uh, to put the exclamation point on the tackle. I also want to give a shout out again to our QA, the Rock and Rev, Randy Fry. We appreciate what you do back there in Missouri, sir. We got single receiver to the left, two receivers to the right. In the Proctor brothers, they give it to Zignaga up the middle. He cuts it up. He's going to get inside the five down to about the three-yard line where it will be first and goal. So, um, Emilio, until we figure out what to do with this offense, it doesn't matter what we do on offense because they're running right over the top of us right now. Right, definitely, and it's something that the coaching staff needs to fix. Zignaga up the middle again, and he's close. He's in. This time he's in from, what was that, four, four, yards, four out. yards out. So two touchdowns on two possessions for Zignaga. And with five or 4.45 to go here in the first quarter, it's already 13 to nothing, Alamo Heights. Yes, yeah, we wait for the extra point try for Alamo Heights Mules right now. You know, it's, Lockhart comes in and they, do, they have a quick three and out, give the ball back to Alamo Heights, and right, once again, Alamo Heights goes right down the field methodically and scores another touchdown. There's a point try. The snap is back. The hold is down. The kick is up. And it is good. 
So with extra point now, it is Alamo Height Buell's 14, Lockhart Line 0 with 4.45 left to go here in the first quarter. And uh, we're going to take a quick break. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMX Sports through Bright Magazine. Meitler Storage is locally owned by Angela and Darren Meitler. Since 2002, Meitler Storage is just off Highway 142 in Maxwell, Texas, across from the Valero. For an appointment, call 512-398-7100. Your business is always appreciated. And a reminder, once a lion, always a lion. Go Lions! All right, we're back here at Lockhart Stadium. One thing I'm looking at is the sidelines, and there is not a lot of emotion out there. It, uh, it's almost like that we've had the wind knocked out of us already. I don't see the usual hype that I see on the sidelines. Yeah, it's going to have to take something right now, maybe a long run back to get this uh, this home team pumped up of your Lockhart Lions, but definitely something is going to have to happen, especially on this next drive for the Lions. They cannot afford to go three and out and give the ball back to uh, Alamo Heights, who's been able to go down the field at will and uh, score two times. So Kobe Love kicking it off. No, that wasn't Kobe Love. I apologize. But it is going to be caught by Isaiah. And it's going to be right there where he caught it. It's number 17, Trevion Godley, that's actually kicking off for them. It was just a high pooch kick. They're going to give it to us at the 31-yard line where we'll uh, take over. Yeah, they'll put it at the 32 with 4.45 left to go here in the, fourth, in the first quarter as Alamo Heights have the lead 14-0 over the Lockhart Lions. Salero brings him to the line, tight formation, slot T. Daquan Ellison around the right side. He's out to the 35, to the 40. He cuts back to the middle. He's out across midfield stripe. And a nice tackle there by number 40, which is Hunter Lee. Maybe that's what we needed is a little bit of Daquan Ellison. It's definitely great run and great blocking up front for the Lockhart Lions, and definitely the speed of Daquan Ellison was was the key factor in that play. As he was able to get to the outside and get up field for a huge gain and a Lockhart Lion first down. Still a tight formation. Daquan again to the left side. He bounces it out. He's going to have to get around the corner, and he does. He's out to the 40. He gets down to the first down marker, and that's what we need to see more of Daquan Ellison. He's got to be one of the best backs in Central Texas. He definitely is, and he's got... He had a he had a rough night last week, and but he's probably around right around the 800 yard range before tonight's game started. So it's going to be first and ten from the 40 yard line. We are now in Alamo Heights territory. Keep this drive going. They're going to go into round. It's Daytron or yeah Daytron Nelson, but they they read that one out, and it was a nice tackle there by number 45. That is Tate Douglas that brought him down in the backfield. He'll lose four on the carry. Yeah, it's definitely something Lockhart didn't want to have to lose yardage on a play, especially after two positive plays or two plays where we got positive yardage out of them and two first downs. Now it just backs Lockhart up. It's second down and 15. Definitely something they, they can get themselves out of as we got two receivers going to the far side. Cortland Zambrano, one of the basketball players, is out there on the left side. They're going to hand it to Daquan at the middle. Kind of a decoy with those guys. He gets close to the original line of scrimmage. Maybe about a three-yard gain. Clock is at 3.30 and counting. It's going to be third and about 13. It's definitely one of those passive plays for the Lions right now and definitely something that's going to be a big play to continue this drive going because, as I mentioned before, they cannot give the ball back to this uh, Alamo Heights defense without putting points on the board. You know, and you knew when... Alamo Heights came in, yeah, they were 3-0, and but they had played three of the lower-level teams in our district, and they beat them all. Yes. But these guys are for real. A real quick pass to Detron Ellison on the left side. He's trying to make a move. He does. He gets about four, maybe five out of it, but we're going to be way short of the first down, and it's four-down territory at this point. It definitely is. You know, being down this early at 14 to nothing, you know, you definitely don't want to give – Give, an, give the, like I said, the Mules an opportunity to get the ball back. So you have to go down, go for it on fourth down. So we got fourth and nine. We're at the 39-yard line of Alamo Heights. Devin Clark, 6'5", <laughs> basketball player, is now out there with Daytron Ellison on the left side. And that's the second timeout called by the Lockhart Lions with 2.25 to go here in the first quarter. It's 14 to nothing, Alamo Heights. We're going to take a quick break. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMX Sports through White Magazine. 
Let First Lockhart National Bank reward you with First Star Rewards Checking, where you earn on your rewards checking balance, get free ATM refunds nationwide, plus so much more. Come on by one of our locations in Lockhart, Kyle, or South Austin to visit with one of our bankers to see how you can get started earning rewards today. You can also check us out online at firstlockhart.com. All right, we're back here at Lockhart, Texas, and I guess... My aunt is actually listening from Topeka. She heard her name. <laughs> so I'm going to tell Aunt Donna, the the karaoke queen of Topeka, <laughs> Kansas, how's it going up there? I think it's warmer in Kansas right now than it is in Texas. I got out of Kansas because I hate cold weather, and now <laughs> it comes down here. Yeah, definitely. If anything needs to warm up here in Lockhart, Texas, it's got to be this Lockhart Lions offense and defensive side of the football. So here we go with the big 6'5", Devin Clark on the left side. We're looking to throw. We're in trouble. He's going to get brought down. He fumbles. And they're going to say he – nope, incomplete. they're going to say it was incomplete. Good. I thought he lost the ball on the throw, but <laughs> thank goodness it was incomplete because that was going to make it 21 to nothing. Definitely. So they'll get the ball. It'll, I think it, they got it at the 39-yard line. Uh, we do got a penalty oh, flag that's there. Oh, there is a there. flag. Intentional oh, and, grounding. Ah, yes. Mm. Not good. Well, he, he it was either that or get killed. I mean, he had four <laughs> guys bearing down on him. So it'll be first and ten for the Alamo Heights Mules at the 49-yard line of Lockhart. They will start the exact same spot they did last time they had the ball. And here comes Aaron Proctor to the left side. His brother is on the other side. So that's just basically pick your poison, and they'll probably not throw to either one of them and hit one of these other guys since we're focusing on those two. Yes, definitely. And, you know, the one who's been uh, able to to reap, reap all the benefits from the Proctor brothers been out there has been Joshua Zanaga as he's uh, already scored two touchdowns, and his, he's been the main staple, the, the main, uh, <laughs> like what they say, the thoroughbred for this offense so far. So the, the, the receiver who's benefited has been Weston Davis, number eight. Aaron Proctor in motion. He's on the right side now. They're going to quickly swing it out to him. That's kind of like a pitch. And he gets tackled open field. Great play there by Datron Ellison. He's going to lose about two yards. Perfect open field tackle. Definitely. And that's one of the things that Coach Herman did talk about is uh, the tackling issues they had last week in Right there, Daytron Ellison, one-on-one -on -one with the receiver and uh, made an excellent tackle in the backfield. So we're looking at about second and 12 here. Unfortunately, Alamo Heights has just been running over the top of us. Their line is twice the size of ours. Hopefully we can get something done here. He's looking to throw. He's looking. He's rolling right. He's going to run, and he runs out of bounds after getting about, about four on the carry probably. I think we have a Rudy Cadillo update. Let me see here. He's going to pick up two on the run. So Rudy Cadillo tells me that the Lady Lions volleyball team against Lanier is up 13-3. to They sure are struggling over there yeah, at Lanier they are. tonight. I hope they pull it out. It's a little iffy right now. Reed with a little swing pass hits the same guy, Weston. He's still on his feet and running. He's down to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, the 5. Touchdown. That was quick. That was basically a 49-yard touchdown pass, and it was connected to Weston Davis, the senior wide receiver. And once again, like you said, Weston Davis is definitely getting his fair share of catches as Lockhart Lions are focusing in on the Proctor brothers from what we could see on the defensive side of the ball, and Weston Davis has been able to capitalize on that on a 49-yard touchdown pass from Reed Anderson. And here comes the extra point by Seth Ellis. Snap his back, hold his down, the kick is up, and it is good. So with that extra point, it is now Alamo Heights Mules 21, Lockhart Line 0 with 126 left to go in the first quarter. And we'll take another quick break. You're listening to Line Country Broadcast Network and KMX Sports Food Fight Magazine. 
Dr. Peterson and his staff at Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic are here to serve you. We've been voted best chiropractor and best chiropractor's office for five years running. Are you bothered by headaches, back pain, or neck pain? Call Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic at 512-668-4163 to make your appointment. Mention this ad to receive a consultation, exam, and x-rays if needed for only $20. Call 512-668-4163 and begin your journey to hope, healing, and health. All right, we're back here at Lockhart Stadium, 21 to nothing. Alamo Heights Mules with 126 to go in the first quarter. Emilio, if we don't get something going offensively and defensively, this is going to get ugly. Definitely, because now we're in a situation to where we're practically going to have to score every possession we have the ball, and we have to make stops on defense to get the ball back and keep the, the, keep the Mules out of the end zone. Well, you know, and they've got those dangerous, dangerous athletes on their team. And I'm not just talking about the Proctor kids. Another high kick, Dequan, or yep, Dequan Ellison muffs the kick. It's going to go out of bounds, and it will be in possession. Yeah, it's just like it would anyways. Oh, I got a fair catch at the 26-yard yep. line. First and 10 at the 26. 125 to go here in the first quarter. 21 to nothing, Alamo Heights Mules. They're not 3-0 and for nothing and 5-1 and overall. No, they're definitely not in before the next play comes up, let me give you a Meitler storage game break throughout the district. It is Medina Valley 14 to nothing over the Coyotes with 6.38 left to go in the first. Tyvee 14 to 0 over Memorial Minutemen with 5.19 left to go in the first. Daytron Ellison around the left side. Oh, my goodness gracious. Some truck just ran him over, and it was number 44 again. That was Mackie Carabin. One of the top middle linebackers in the state of Texas. Yes, definitely no gain on that run. And uh, as far as the champion Kennedy Rockets score, they have not posted that score up yet. But here at Lions Stadium, it is Alamo Height Mules 21, Lockhart Lions 0 with 58 seconds left to go here in the first quarter. So second and 10, tight formation. They're going to go around the right side with Aldonia, and they're going to catch up with him and throw him to the ground. He's going to lose probably three yards. This tells, and again, look who's there. The, he's not the you know the best linebacker in the area for nothing. No, he's not. And they're going to give Aldonia forward progress for a one-yard pickup. And when you can catch Aldonia and the Ellison brothers and be that big, you're going to be playing on Saturdays somewhere. Yes, definitely he will be. He's, he's, he's shown his presence so far that, you know, showing us why he's the best uh, defensive linebacker in pretty much in the state. So Salero brings the team to the line. we got one man split to the right. They're going to look for pass. Over the middle it goes. Daytron Ellison, first down. He's still moving. He's out to about the 39. He's got about 55 guys from Alamo High wrapped <laughs> around him. I mean, they are I, yeah, I could have sworn I seen tackling. some coming from the sidelines. I was like, tackle. my gosh, the cheerleaders are coming out here to make this tackle. But great catch, great pass by Jackie Edwards. And, yes, that is my neighbor. And he does a great job of getting us moved, moved the sticks right to the 40-yard line. But that's going to end the first quarter. So the uh, first quarter ends. Alamo Heights Mules 21, Lockhart Lions 0. We'll take a real quick commercial break. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network. You can get Sports Food Bite Magazine. For over 15 years, rain and drywall and paint has been serving Lockhart and the surrounding counties. We are experienced in all phases of construction. You can count on us for any exterior or interior painting job. Call 512-925-0634 to schedule an appointment with rain and drywall and paint today. And we are back here at Lions Stadium as the uh, Lockhart Lions just got a first down on a beautiful pass from Jackie Edwards to uh, Daytron Ellison. It was a beautifully executed play as they had Devon, Devin Clark go for a long, you know, go for a streak, and they covered him with two guys and left Daytron Ellison wide open up the middle for a great pass catch to, to end the first quarter. As now we're going to be starting the first, the second quarter, as your line's going to be going from right to left as you're listening to the ball game tonight. So here we go. Up the middle they go with Daquan. No, it's Daytron. I'm sorry. Nice run by Daytron. He gets it out across the 45-yard line, out to about the 46. Yes, to the 46. You know, and that was a very tough run by Daytron Ellison right there. But, you know, he's only 5'3", 5'4", 145 pounds. But to go up against these monsters that Alamo Heights are bringing in and for him to pick up that many yards bouncing off of each defender, you know, great job by Daytron Ellison. Shows a... 
the big heart that he has and the determination he well, it's like you, with it's them. like you said the Ellison family my gosh they're like they breed running backs so here we go around the left side nice pass out to Detroit Great Ellison catch. one handed <laughs> catch oh amazing catch wow he gets that out to about the 45 yard line of Alamo Heights and the sophomore quarterback Jackie Edwards feet are set he's hit two perfect passes back to back there Definitely. You know what? And I had a talk with Jackie Edwards over uh, through Messenger, and I explained to him what we had seen about him setting his feet, and he did an excellent job of setting his feet and making a great throw. And here it comes again. It's going to be Daquan Ellison around the right side. He cuts out. The big boy trying to catch up to him. They did string him out, though. And there's a flag. I think they roughed him out of bounds there, so we might get a couple yards out of this. Yeah, a couple. But, but yeah, here's the thing that I can't. I'm sitting here in awe, again, Texas football versus Kansas football. There is no comparison. Uh, Mackie Carabin, this guy is amazing. That is a huge man, and he's catching Daquan Ellison. I couldn't catch Daquan Ellison in my Mustang. I, that uh, is amazing. I wouldn't even try to attempt to catch him. But, you know, it, it's, it just goes to show the athletics. The, you know, the this guy, Carabin, he's, he's definitely a force to be reckoned with throughout the district. And, you know, pre pretty much throughout the state. We've got to have three of the top teams in the area. I mean, Medina Valley with that monster running back and their defense. Yeah. And then, you know, we haven't seen Kerrville Tyvee, but they're coming yeah. up. Yeah. And then these guys are like, it's like watching, I don't know, an NFL football team. They're just that <laughs> athletic. So we did get a first and 10 on the penalty. It's first and 10 at the 31-yard line of Alamo Heights. Don't care how you move the ball, just move it. Aldania around the right side. He breaks free to the 25, muscles his way down to about the 23. Nice run by Aldania. Definitely nice run. Put his shoulder down. First, he got away from a defender. I don't know who, I didn't catch who the defender was, but he was able to sidestep the defender, get around the outside, and just lowered his shoulder and made a boom for pick up about another two, three more yards. That almost looks like Nick, no, not Nick Proctor. That's Curtis Johnson out there that he got around. So we got a receiver out to the right. It looks like Devin Clark with Daytron Ellison to the right. They're looking to throw again. He's rolling out right. He's going to throw it up and kind of just threw it away. So that'll make it a third or fourth and two. Yeah, definitely threw it away. Didn't have nobody to throw to. Jackie Edwards, the sophomore quarterback, making the wise decision. He didn't have enough room to tuck it and run, but made the wise decision to throw it out of bounds, you know, now it's third down and two. If he would have held on to it or thrown a bad pass, it would have been third down and long or on a po or a possible interception. All right, so here we go again. Hand off Aldonia. Oh, goodness gracious. Look who just buried him. <laughs> so he didn't even have a chance. As again, Mackie Carabin putting on a show, making it fourth down. It looks like we might have lost a yard. Yes, we lost a yard. They put the ball back at the 24-yard line. Hey, real quick, the girls won again 25-9. to All they got to do is win this third game, and they've won another match. Coach Bothy has done a great job with the Lady Lions volleyball program. Yes, definitely, and their only two losses in district come to, you know, Dripping Springs, if you've ever heard of them before. Yeah, they, you know, they're not good at yeah. sports over there. Right up the middle, they go with Daytron Ellison, and he <laughs> dives yeah, forward. Bro. Just like I talked about, the heart and the determination this young guy has, you know, he got hit hard right around the 23-yard the line, but got spun around and just ran the rest of the way backwards to pick up a first down for the line. And he dove backwards. Yeah. These Ellison kids are amazing. The diamond, diamond, yeah, dynamic <laughs> duo for nothing. My goodness. And neither one of them are over 5'5", five, five probably. No. <laughs> So here it is, first and ten. The ball's at the 29 or 19 yard line. I'm sorry. Edwards throws a little swing pass out to Daquan. Daquan's another spin move. The Ellison brothers putting on a show themselves. A nice gain because that kind of got ugly when he spun around for that little screen pass, so to speak. They were reading it, but Daquan Ellison got three out of it, maybe four. We're at the 9-10 mark. It's yeah. 21 to nothing here in the second quarter. Alamo Heights on top. Two receivers to the left, Devin Clark, 6'5", basketball players, one of them. Up the middle we go with Daquan, and they just kind of manhandled him right up there in the middle. 
our offensive line is not a bad offensive line at all, and these guys are kind of dominating us in the trenches. Yes, they are. And like I said, one of the things that Lockhart needs to do is uh, get these Ellison brothers clicking on all cylinders because, you, I mean, it's going to be very difficult to take, con take back control of this ball game if you can't have two running backs or even the three-headed monster contributing in a positive way. Uh, quarter uh, – Basketball player Cortland Zambrano is out there. They give it to Daytron. Oh, my goodness. Daytron Ellison ran hard, but he got hit hard. And, again, Mackey is there to make the tackle. <laughs> my gosh. This kid's going to hurt somebody. Mackey Carabin. I mean, he hits you like a diesel. <laughs> Ball's going to be at the 13-yard line. And uh, it's going to be fourth and long for the Lions. It'll be fourth and four. We got him right where we want him. This is it. Tight formation. They're going to give it to Quan. Oh, good gravy. Number 59. I got to check that number out. That was Isaiah Fernandez. He busted through the hole. He blew it up and tackled the Quan in the backfield. So we're going to turn it over on possession. 7.48 to go here in the fir or first half. 21 nothing. Alamo Heights Mules will take a quick break. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports through Bright Magazine. Meitler Storage is locally owned by Angela and Darren Meitler. Since 2002, Meitler Storage is just off Highway 142 in Maxwell, Texas, across from the Valero. For an appointment, call 512-398-7100. Your business is always appreciated. And a reminder, once a lion, always a lion. Go Lions! All right, we're back here at Lockhart Stadium. Twin receivers on each side. Zignaga in the backfield. Reed's going to roll out right. He's going to keep it. He gets tripped up. He gains about three, maybe four. Tackled there by number six, Eliza Sanchez. He also had um, Sammy Yabara there helping him out. So what, about second and six? Second and seven they're going to call it. Second and seven. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Reed is going to look to throw. Going deep. And he's got his man. Oh, good oh, job. Great job by Devin Clark. The 6'5 basketball player stuck that big old paw up there and said, no, Mr. Proctor, you're not catching this Definitely. one. Definitely. Great play by Devin Clark to, you know, pretty much sitting back there playing the center field position as a baseball player. And he was able to track that ball down and uh, knock it right out of the air before Proctor was able to get his hands on it. Now, Rudy Cadillo told me he had a prediction for the girls' third game. I'm going to see if he's right. So they got two receivers to each side. Zignog in the backfield. Anderson, the quarterback. And when I say Reed, I mean Anderson. It's just easier <laughs> to say Reed. Reed Anderson, who's really running the show here. He's a great quarterback. Throws a quick out. Hits Aaron Proctor. And he's out to the 30. They're going to move the sticks first and 10. It should be illegal to have this many good football players on one team. Yes, it should be. <laughs> But Alamo Heights has always had a great program, football program, at a, you know, to come out year in and year out. Three receivers to the left. Zingnaga up the middle. He's got a lot of room. He gets out to about the 40. I'm going to say, yeah, they did mark him at the 40. I thought he went down to 39. They're going to move the sticks as he goes 10 yards for that one. And it was Alex Thompson, the junior, making the making the play. That you talk about a good athlete. That's a good athlete. Yes, definitely. And one of those things that Coach Herman was talking about the tackle situation. You know, you got a safety coming up to make the tackle when it should be the linebacker. So it's a big big test for the Lions today. Zignaga up the middle. He's to the 42. Sanchez says, "No, sir, you're not going very far." <laughs> he play by Sanchez. He <laughs> basically bear hugged him and threw him down. Sanchez with a great play. Yes. Second and. They're going to call it nine on the board. I say eight. 6.20 to go here in the first half. Still 21 to nothing. The bad news is we're down 21 to nothing. The good news is they haven't scored on us this quarter. Yes. And they're going to roll out left. Anderson's got all kinds of green to run up. He's got the first down and more. He's down to about the 43-yard line. And just option play, and he decided to keep it. Yes, it looks like they're going to have him running out right around the 45-yard 40 line. So first and 10 at the 45, six minutes exactly to go here in the first half. Alamo Heights Mules quarterback, got to be one of the best in the district with his feet and with his arm. And then he's got all these weapons. This little Zignaga guy, like I said, he just reminds me so much of Maggot from back in the day. Quick. He reminds me of the Ellison boys. 
There's a quick out. That's the older Proctor who does a Michael Jackson spin move out of bounds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> These guys are so athletic, it's not even funny. But it's second and ten. That's, that's a good job. That's a good job there. We were all over him. And that was, I'm trying to see, that was Daytron Ellison that basically shoved him out of bounds. Second and ten. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Anderson's looking to the left side. He's going to roll out right. He throws it long. Zignaga, what a catch. He gonna, can't be over 5'3", and made a great shoestring catch or toe catch. Well, they call it a toe tap on the sidelines. It was a great catch by Zignaga, and even greater throw by Anderson to get it out there. And it was on the run. So here we are, first and 10 at the 25-yard line of Lockhart. 5.34 to go here in the first half. Zignaga is going to get the ball. He should be tired by now. He's going to run it to the right side, get it down inside the 20 or right at the 20. And they're doing a lot of shuffling on defense. We're trying to keep guys fresh. I can see that. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. No, actually, that's three receivers to the left. Nick Carter on the left, Aaron Carter on the right. Again, pick your poison, but I'm probably going to go to Zignaga again. And it does. Up the middle. He finds the hole, finds the crease. Another spin move. He's down close to the 10. They're going to say he's down about the 13. You know, great run by Zignaga. You can see the patience that he has. It's As soon as he gets the ball, he does a stutter step and waits for, his, waits for a couple of his spots to open up and then shoots right into the gap to get positive yardage. This guy's got to be a 100, 200 yard sprinter and track. He is amazingly fast. Two receivers to the left. They're going to go right up the middle with the little guy again. And that's his hat trick for a touchdown as he goes 13 yards for the touchdown and making it 27 to nothing with 4.37 to go here in the first half. Yes, run up the middle practically untouched by Joshua Zanaga. And once again, you know, Lockhart's having a difficult time making the tackles when they need to make tackles as um, Seth Ellis is coming in for the extra point try. Snap his back, the hold is down, the kick is up. And it is right There's through a flag. the uprights. There is a flag. And they're going to call it on us. So I'm pretty sure Alamo Heights will decline that penalty. And with 4.37 left to go here in the first half, it is Alamo Heights Mules 28, Lockhart Lions 0, and we'll take a quick break. You're listening to the Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports through Bite Magazine. Chisholm Trail Barbecue features slow-cooked brisket, hot sausage, beef, and pork ribs done the right way. In a town famous for barbecue, Chisholm Trail is where the locals come to eat. Visit Chisholm Trail Barbecue, 1323 South Colorado in Lockhart, and come by after the game. Chisholm Trail Barbecue stays open until midnight after every home football game. All right, we're back here at Lockhart High School. It's 28 to nothing here in the first half, 437 to go in the ball game, or in the first half of the game. Um, one thing that we will do at halftime is our band will go last. So we will go ahead and talk about the stats, the other scores, the volleyball team who is now up 8-2 to two in the third game of the, of the match there, um, looking to move their total to, I believe it would be 12-2 uh, and two at that point. I think it's going to move them to 12-2, 12, 12 and two, I believe. But anyways, uh, we'll talk about things first, and then when Lockhart's band comes out, we'll go ahead and turn our mics off so you can hear them playing their entirety. Here goes the kickoff. It's a deep kick this time. Aldonia has it. He's at the 5. He's out to the 10, to the 15. Up the middle he goes to the 20, to the 30. Ah, he got caught up right there about the 27. I thought he was going to get out to the 30, but a great run by Aldonia. Good blocking from special teams. And we'll take that. Again, it's where we normally would start anyways, but it was a good return. Yes, definitely. Lockhart Lions had a great drive going the last time they were out. They had the ball for a total of 13 plays and took about six minutes off the play clock, but they came out on the short end because they went four and out, you know, uh, turnover on downs deep in the Alamo Heights territory. Tight formation. He's oh, he's in trouble. It's a broken play. I think he and Aldonia had their plays crossed up. We have a guy on the ground, but he's going to get up. Um, 
Rudy is really close to being right in his score. I'm having a feeling he already watched these games, <laughs> and he's just telling me what the scores are. They're probably already over. But it's 17-4 to 4 right now. The Lady Lions are on top, and this man is almost correct on his score that he predicted. It is 4.02 to go, and the clock is moving. We are at the 24-yard line. Devin Clark, 6'5", basketball players on the outside. They're going to go with Datron Ellison on the right side. He moves it up the field back to the original line of scrimmage. It's going to bring up third down and about nine. I think he's going to pick up more than just back to the line of scrimmage. He's going to pick up an extra yard there. So I was corrected by Rudy Cadillo. Very, very bad job on my part. It's going to be 11-2 after they win tonight. I'm glad Rudy's there. I'd be lost without Rudy. Yeah, 12 and 2 sounds better, though. You know, yeah, it does sound better. <laughs> and you know, one thing about if Rudy ever asks you to golf for money, don't do it. He's really good. <laughs> okay, we're in motion, and the flags are out. I kind of thought Daytron may have moved a little early. So the flags are up. I'm guessing it'll be moving us back. We're just kind of putting ourselves in a pretty big hole. But to be honest, this team is really good. Yes, especially when you got <laughs> you got you know Carabin, who's pretty much taking taking over the whole defense and coming up with huge plays and huge stops. You know, it's it makes that it makes it that much easier for the Tyree defensive coaching staff to work around. Okay, here we go around the. Oh, he's gonna throw. He's in trouble. Oh, good gravy. Ugh, that was three guys all over. He wasn't getting that play off at all. Every time we try to pass, though, it seems like they've got two or three guys all over him. So we lose more yardage. It's going to be fourth down and a very, very long ways. I have a, I have a list of things I could actually say right now, but I'm not <laughs> going to say it. Uh, definitely. Well, no need for it anyway, but it's going to be fourth down and very long for the Lions and. I believe they called their third and final timeout, if I'm correct. Or Yes, I think so. They called their third and final timeout. You know, They're coming out with the hook and ladder. Might as well go out the bang. Yeah, why not? If you got trick plays, let's start doing them. Make it fun. Get these kids excited. But definitely, it's got to be something to where, you know, Lockhart, even if they give the ball back to Tyvee, wherever they're at, the defense has to stop this – out this mule's offense from getting into the end zone just before halftime because Lockhart does get the ball back to start the second half. It's 21 to 7 in the volleyball. 22 to 7. Boy, he's staying on top of this. <laughs> he's nervous because his score is almost wrong. Here comes a punt. It's a better punt this time. It's going to bounce for Lockhart. Uh oh, a, a fumbled up muff there. And Nick Proctor just says, I'm not messing with this. I'm going to pick it up and gain about four yards and step out of bounds. So they'll get it first and 10 at the Lockhart 48-yard line. 2.36 to go here in the first half. We'll take a quick break. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports through Bright Magazine. Dr. Peterson and his staff at Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic are here to serve you. We've been voted Best Chiropractor and Best Chiropractor's Office for five years running. Are you bothered by headaches, back pain, or neck pain? Call Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic at 512-668-4163 to make your appointment. Mention this ad to receive a consultation, exam, and x-rays if needed for only $20. Call 512-668-4163 and begin your journey to hope, healing, and health. <laughs> All right, we're back here at Lockhart Stadium. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. They're going to roll out left, and the quarterback's going to get hung up. And I want to say that was Sanchez that got his leg or his arm on his leg. He picks up one. It's second and nine. 24 to 7 is the score. If we score again, Rudy Cadillo will be right on his <laughs> prediction. Second and nine. Great tackle by Sammy Ibata, who got up, oh. pumped up. Yeah, good, Sammy good. Ibata made the tackle right awesome. there. He jumped up, pumped up, and this is what, you know, it, this is what the defense needs to do. They, can, they need to step up and get pumped up for this game. Two receivers to each side. He's going deep, looking for Carter, or Proctor. Proctor with a great catch. He's inside the 10, maybe the 6. 
And uh, Proctor, oh, oh goodness, Daquan Ellison just knocked the ball out of Proctor's hands. The flag went up. Proctor was doing a little bit of taunting there. Yes. So we'll see who it goes on. Uh, Rudy was right. 25-7 to seven is your final. The girls win and go to 11-2 and two in volleyball. Good job, ladies. Thank you, Rudy Cadillo, for your reports. I can't believe you yes. predicted that right. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, I guess they're discussing it. You know, there was a little, you know, taunting on Proctor's portion of the, of the after, of the, you know, right after the play ended, and Day Daquan Ellison just got upset with it, knocked the ball out of his hand, and attempted to kick a field goal with it as well. So, you know, it. I don't know if there's going to be an ejection on, you know, on. You know, on Dequan's well, part, but he is in front of us, walking away from the field. We got Jaden Garza there trying to calm him down, and you know, it. Unfortunately, Jaden Garza got hurt, and his season ended. But he's still he's still there to support his teammates, and assist him in whatever he needs to do. And if it means calming down one of his players, then he's right there for him. And he's Jaden's holding his helmet, so that's might be an indication of an ejection. They just haven't. I didn't see any signals of anything. So they are first and goal at the four-yard line. I'm guessing Zignaga up the middle. They might try to throw a touchdown pass. I don't know. Honestly, I don't think they really needed to go for the big play right there. Yeah, of course it worked. But it's not necessary at this point. They're going to roll out. They're going to pitch it out to Zignaga. He's going to cut it up, and he scores again. So he'll score from four yards out. He gets his fourth touchdown of the night. That's going to make it. 34 to nothing with a minute 35 here in yes, the first definitely. half. You know, great run by Zanaga. And if, if you looked at that run from him right there, he was face-to-face -face with practically the best defensive player that we got for the low court lines in Eddie Tukar. And, I mean, he left Eddie Tukar standing all by himself. Didn't know which way to go as he made that cutback to get into the end zone. But, you know, great job by Zanaga in getting into, into the end zone. Comes the extra point, the snap is back, to hold it down, the kick is up, and it is good. So with that extra point try now, it is, it is the Alamo Height Mules 34, Lockhart line 0 with 129 left to go here in the first half. And uh, we're about 1 minute 29 seconds away from uh, the Johnny and Sons paint and body show, halftime show. As uh, Scott mentioned, we'll bring you... Uh, you know, halftime thoughts and analysis of the first half. And then we'll also bring you the sweet sounds of the Lockhart Lion roaring band as they take the field after the Alamo Height Mules roar, uh, band takes takes place. But for now, it is 131 left to go here in the first half. 35 to nothing, Alamo Heights Mules over the Lockhart Lions, 35 to zero. And it's been a rough first half once again for the Lockhart Lions to match the rough half they have against Bernie Champion last week. Well, I've been at this for three years now, and I have never seen Lockhart get beat like this before. And last year, we gave this team a game. Yes, and we did. And, you know, and it was every team that we gave a game. You know, it, was, it always went into deep into the third or early fourth quarters. And then, you know, little mistakes, penalties, fumbles, you know, is when the game started getting away. But we were in those games throughout the whole season. So I'm looking... Yeah, Ellison is not out there, so I'm thinking he may be done for the night. That's going to be the baby bull that gets it at the 20. He's out to the 25 to the 30, gets it out to about the 33-yard line. Nice return there by Jordan Garcia, the sophomore. That's first action of the game tonight. And that's a kid who, because of the Ellisons in Aldonia, stands on the sidelines, and he could be starting for a lot of teams out there. Yes, definitely, he could be. The one thing about our town, we don't lack speed and athletes. We just, the size, that's where we kind of come up short sometimes. We don't have as big a teams as some of these other players. Tight formation. Daytron in the middle. They're going to give it to the baby bull up the middle. He's out across the 40 to about the 41-yard line, and they're thinking, who is this guy? <laughs> so the sophomore takes it for about a nine-yard gain. He does take it for nine. 35 to nothing, 118 and counting to go here in the first half. It would be nice to see us break one big here and get on the board. Definitely. And, you know, 
score one before halftime. Tight formation again, slot T. Going to give it, oh, goodness. I don't know if that was a broken play or what, but we move forward, and the ball's on the ground, and they're saying they got it. And they do have it. I don't know who turned it over, though. Anyways, the ball was turned over. They do get it. So it's 35 to nothing. Alamo Heights is going to get the ball back at the 45-yard line of Lockhart. And that is one thing we couldn't have happen to us at that point in time because they're back in striking distance again. Definitely. With one minute left to go in the game, you know, they've methodically went down the field, chewing up a lot of plays and chewing a lot of clock as well. But this team can strike on one play at any time. So they'll have two receivers to the right, two to the left. They're waiting for their play. Zignaga's in the backfield. He's got Anderson with him. We'll see what happens. They're going to throw again. They're looking to run this thing up. They're going over the middle to Proctor. Proctor makes the catch on the dime. His brother tried to steal it from him. Proctor takes it about 25 yards through the back of the end zone. And we're now looking at 41 0. They're going to get him for taunting again. The flags are flying everywhere. And again, I'm all about if you've got a good team, go ahead and, you know, bury your opponents. But it's getting a little dicey here with this taunting that's it going on. It definitely is. Definitely something that's not needed, especially after it happened the first time. You know, I don't know if they called a personal foul or unsportsmanlike conduct on that last play that they had that uh, Daquan Ellison got taken out of the game. But, you know, if it's his second one, I'm pretty sure he might get the heave hole also. But, you know, with the lead of 41 to nothing, with 53 seconds left to go here in the first half, you know, would they miss the Proctor brother? I don't think so. So Seth Ellis will get set up. I'm not real sure. It looks like they're backing them up. Unsportsmanlike, uh, of course. That's what I figured. Yeah, they might assess the penalty on the kickoff as well, too. So, yeah, there's just, I mean, there was no need to drop, run 35 yards behind the end zone. And as soon as he turned around to come back, they threw the flag at him. 53 seconds to go. Here comes the extra point by Ellis. And it's nothing but the back of the net, and there's yeah. flags down again. They're probably going to get Lockhart. Yeah, it's going to be yep. offside, so they'll they'll decline the penalty. So with that, it's going to be Alamo Heights increasing their lead, 42 to nothing over the Lockhart lines, with 53 seconds left to go here in the first half. And we'll take a quick break. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports through Byte Magazine. Hello, Americans. Mark Twain said, "A broken promise is better than no promise at all." Well, you and I both know when we make a promise, we keep it. Chuck Nash Auto Group has been doing that for years. They offer up the kind of one-on-one -on -one service that will follow the taillights of your pre-owned vehicle deep into that gorgeous Texas sunset. By the way, Chuck Nash will give you $750 more for your car, buy, or trade. Now you know the best of the story. All right, we're back here at Lockhart Stadium. We're 53 seconds to go here in the first half. It's 42 to nothing. Uh, you know, we're, we've played one half, and this team has already scored their average for district play. They've been averaging 42 points a game in district, and they've already hit it at halftime. Um, I would like to maybe see them, as the third quarter progresses, they start putting some of their backups in because, really, there is no need to be passing the ball like this especially with the running back you got. Yes, definitely. And, you know, like I said, it was you know, they have the ability to strike with one play, and they did that. There's a high kick. The baby bowl Garcia with it at the 33-yard line, and he's going to get it up to about the 39. It's going to be very close. I tell you, wearing number 15, it's like the kid never graduated. <laughs> yeah, exactly. His brother, his brother wore Garcia, it for years. Yeah. Ran the ball well for us for years, and now his little brother's wearing the same number, doing the exact same thing his brother did. Yes. And he's just a sophomore. So with 50 seconds left to go here in the first half, Lockhart has the ball at their own 39. It'll be uh, Cortland Zambrano split to the left. Everybody else is kind of tight formation. They're looking for Zambrano on a sla uh, slant pattern. And that was a little unnecessary. Zambrano was going for the slant, and then um, it was Carabin who just kind of, in my opinion, gave him a cheap shot yeah. coming over the middle. Um, the kid is good, but it's almost like 
we did something to them and are trying to send us a message is the way yeah. I'm reading Well, this. like I mentioned at the in the first Law Cart National League pregame show, last time Alamo Height Mules came to Law Cart, they went home with the loss and out of the playoffs. So it's Devin Clark on the left. They're going to go with the bull again. He gets out to about the 44-yard line. Nice five-yard pickup there by him. He just basically uh, went down off, off the left guard's rear end and, and had a nice hole there. Yes, yeah, great blocking up front for the law court lines right there as they were to create that hole. And like I said, right off, right off the left guard's backside, the baby bull was able to get around and pick up a nice yards uh, gain of five yards where it now puts the law court lines at third down and five. Cortland Zambrano split to the left, man in motion. They're going to go up the middle with the baby bull again. He's out to about the 48-yard line, short of the first down, but why not go for it? That's going to be it. There yeah. will be no going for it. So that is your first half of play. It was not a pretty one for Lockhart as the Alamo Heights Mules are winning 42 to nothing. We're going to take some commercial breaks here, and then we're going to go ahead and uh, – Talk about what we need to talk about, and then we'll listen to the roaring band of Lockhart, and that will be a treat for you all as we've got one of the best bands around. Yes, and when we come back, it'll be the beginning of the Johnny and Sons Paint and Body Shop halftime show here at Lockhart Lions Stadium, and we'll take a quick break from commercial spots. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports through Bright Magazine. Let First Lockhart National Bank reward you with First Star Rewards Checking, where you earn on your rewards checking balance, get free ATM refunds nationwide, plus so much more. Come on by one of our locations in Lockhart, Kyle, or South Austin to visit with one of our bankers to see how you can get started earning rewards today. You can also check us out online at firstlockhart.com. Dr. Peterson and his staff at Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic are here to serve you. We've been voted best chiropractor and best chiropractor's office for five years running. Are you bothered by headaches, back pain, or neck pain? Call Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic at 512-668-4163 to make your appointment. Mention this ad to receive a consultation, exam, and x-rays if needed for only $20. Call 512-668-4163 and begin your journey to hope, healing, and health. Hello, Americans. Mark Twain said, a broken promise is better than no promise at all. Well, you and I both know when we make a promise, we keep it. Chuck Nash Auto Group has been doing that for years. They offer up the kind of one-on-one -on -one service that will follow the taillights of your pre-owned vehicle deep into that gorgeous Texas sunset. By the way, Chuck Nash will give you $750 more for your car, buy, or trade. Now you know the best of the story. Johnny and Sons Pain Body has been Lockhart's premier collision repair and auto body shop since 1967. Certified iCar Standard, the highest ranking in the collision industry. For all your collision needs, come by and see Johnny and Sons 400 Blackjack in Lockhart. Johnny and Sons Pain Body, we won't steer you wrong. And we are back here live at Lions Stadium. It is halftime, and Alamo Heights Mules has. Took a, a big lead over the Lockhart Lions to take into the halftime. It is Alamo Height Mules 42, Lockhart Lions 0. And, Scott, it's been a rough night for uh, the whole offense and defensive side of the football for the Lockhart Lions. As Lockhart has yet to put the ball into the end zone. You know, and they haven't had too much of a, you know, they haven't had any drives to where they've been able to with the exception of one where they ran a total of 13 plays for almost seven and a half minutes only to lose the ball on turno on a, you know turnover on downs deep in uh, Alamo Heights territory. Alamo Heights was able to turn that into, ex into a touchdown as Alamo Heights has scored on every possession that they've had tonight. And it's just been a difficult night on both sides of the ball for the law card lines as they haven't been able to produce much. They've shown some promise here and there, but the Alamo Heights Mules are, are quick. They got this monster of Carabin who's been all over the field. He's practically, it's like he's in the in the huddle, in the huddle for the Lockhart Lions, listening as the plays come in, because wherever that ball is, he's right there with them. So, rough night so far for the Lockhart Lions, and, you know, it's, it's going to be a big uphill to climb if they want to try and come back and, you know, come out of, the, out of this game with the W, but Alamo Heights is just that good. Well, continue to speak about their middle linebacker he has to have 
the presence of Mike Singletary. The guy can get from point A to point B in a half a second, and then when he hits you, you wish he wouldn't have. And he's just a huge guy. And he, just, like you said, he's just dominating everything. And then on the other side of the ball, we're trying. We're not giving up. But it's kind of hard to get it by that guy. And with the, their line is so much bigger than ours, you can see that they're blowing up the line. Our, our running game is getting all bent out of shape because we can't get the holes we normally get. But we're, we're not throwing the ball badly, but he's not getting much time to throw the ball because of their defensive linemen. Um, my only problem so far with the game, and it has nothing to do with us, we're to the point now it's 42 to nothing. This game is all but over. And you're still throwing bombs. I don't get that. How yeah. about we just run the ball, run the clock, and let's go home instead of, hey, let's see if we can score 80 points tonight. Yes. Again, to me, you're all about winning. That's what sports are about. You're, you're winning. But at what cost do you need to continue to throw the ball down the field time and time again? It's To me, it's not necessary. If they will go ahead early in the third quarter and start replacing their stars with their bench and they keep running the score up on us, that's fine because that's their bench doing it. But your starters are proving the point. They're up 42 to nothing and a half. So let's call the dogs off a little bit and uh, – and hopefully no one will get hurt because that carabin is hitting. Yes, yeah. he's uh, he's done an outstanding job. And you know, take nothing away from the Lockhart Lions' offense. It's just this guy has been everywhere. He's been a force to reckon with all night. Long, all, you know, during the first half. Then you go on the offensive side of the ball for uh, for the Mules. Reed Anderson. Uh, let's just hand it over to uh, to uh, Joshua. You know, Zanaga. He's done an amazing job and. That's that has to do in part with the two Proctor brothers that are spread out wide. You know, it opens up that 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 middle portion of the field, and Zanaga has been able to capitalize on that, and he's had three touchdown runs because of that. I mean, they've been short runs, but it's you know, it, Lockhart Lions defense has been a hard time has had a hard time trying to stop Zanaga whenever he touches the he's ball. He's actually scored four times. Four times. Three. Yeah, he's. I mean, I was asleep. <laughs> well, you know, well the one was just a quick hitter towards the end there. I mean, they, yeah. the kid is so fast, and like you said, he reads his blocks so yes. well. This is a well-coached offensive team, and then on the other side of the ball, that's a scary defense. My goodness. Yes, it is. And, you know, we did have we did sustain a great drive, just didn't, you know, finish up with points on the board. You know, we had great runs by Daytron Ellison, Daquan Ellison on a couple of pass plays from Jackie Edwards. You know, just we just couldn't capitalize on them. It's like as soon as we got into the red zone, that Mule's defense tightened up on the lines and just wouldn't let us get any further. So you know, great <coughs> you know, great job for the Mules, you know, to come in and execute their game plan to perfection. And you know, they've really had the Lockhart Lions on their heels offensively and defensively. And you know, I'm pretty sure that's something that they're talking about. You know, they got to come out of here and they got to, you know, it, it's it's going to be a smash mouth football game from this point on. You know, and uh, as far as uh, Animal Heights Mules running up the score, you know, it's 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 kind of bad sportsmanship when you do that. But, you know, like I said, they can't they come into this game, even though it's been three years removed that uh, when they came in here and Lockhart came out with the victory, I want to say it was 44 to 36 at the time. And not just that, but they allowed the wonder the du dynamic duo's brother DJ Ellison he ran for 350 yards against the Alamo Height Mules that game Lockhart put up 486 yards in that game so DJ Ellison accounted for 350 of those by himself and he only had 20 carries in that ball game so you know like i said they're different players on both sides of the ball but you still got the Ellison name on there and i'm pretty sure they're focusing on that because you know, it's if it's not one Ellison brother one week, it's the other Ellison the next week, and for them to have success in tonight's ball game, it was going to have to take the effort of both Ellison brothers, and then you throw Jesus Aldana in there, who you know who would ha would have an ex outstanding game too, but they they focus not just on one person, one Ellison brother. They've been focusing on both Ellison brothers, you know, and Austin Garcia. Uh, uh, the baby bull's brother Garcia comes in, picks up some nice yardage, you know, and that I'm pretty sure that threw them off guard because they're looking for 21, 
They're looking for number three. They're looking for 24, and you throw somebody else in there. And I think that's where Lockhart's going to find success in the second half is, you know, 42 nothing is a huge hot hill to climb to get back into this ball game. So this might be the opportunity where we're going to see the sophomores come in and get extra playing time, and uh, we'll probably be seeing a big difference. Even though I don't know if Alamo Heights Mills will come out with their second teamers or what, but it's still going to be a huge, huge uh, part of the offense to see these young guys that's going to be here for the next two, three years to come in here and get that experience against the top team like Alamo Heights and hopefully move the ball down the field with ease. So, Well, you know, and the thing of being an ex-coach here is – this second half is about pride. It's yes. about coming out and the score is zero zero when you come out in the second half. I don't care what the board says. At this point in time, you're beating them the second half. That's what the pride is about. Again, yeah, this is a great football team, but if you want to go to the playoffs, if you're wanting to do some damage in the playoffs, you got to be- beat the big boys. So step up, punch them back in the mouth, and and get you know show them that who you are. Yeah. Show them who you are because in the first half, they showed us who they were. Now it's our turn. And like you said, I think a little bit of Jordan Garcia is going to go a long ways because so far he's been the answer to our offense. He's been getting some nice plays for us. Yes, definitely he has. And like I said, it's it's a game of two halves. You know, 42 to nothing in the first half, that's got to go, you know, they can't think about that as the Lions come out. They can't think of this first half no more. It's about, like you said, pride. You know, the, the pride of a Lion. You know, it, it doesn't matter if you lose half your pride. You still got to continue that pride going. So if you lose the first half, come back and win the second half. You know, and that would be the, the, you know, the time where these Lions, especially the young Lions, which I'm pretty sure we're going to see more of in the second half, to come out, you know, take control of the second half, and let's outscore them in the second half. You know, the first, first half's already done. You know, if we could outscore them in the second half, that's going to be a huge moral victory for these young Lions that are sophomores, and I, I think we, we might have a freshman or two on the, on the team, but these young sophomores and young juniors that don't get that much playing time to come out here and to showcase their talent and get some game experience under the Friday Night Lights against the, you know what's turned out to be a great team in the Alamo Heights. Okay, I'm going to switch gears, get away from football right now. I have two things I want to t- throw out there. I want to congratulate our tennis team. That's the furthest they've ever gone in tennis want to congratulate them and their coaching staff there for what they accomplished this year. Definitely. I think it's their first time ever making the playoffs. Yes, it so is. That's it a was. huge accomplishment. And tennis sports in high school, in Lockhart High School, has been around for a long time. So, you know, big props to them. You know, and, and that's just the spring season. They still got the fall season that they got to go to. Right. And then going a little further, Tuesday night at home, we uh, – we will go live at 6 for the pregame. At 6.30, LBJ comes to town for the girls' volleyball. We'll have that call for you on Tuesday night. And then I don't have the date, and I have not seen anything. I usually see what's going on with this team in Facebook, but I have not seen anything posted about them. And I, I can't do the reporting on Lion Country Broadcast Network if I don't get the information from folks. But um, Scott Hempen still. He's not only taking the boys' cross-country team, but the girls' cross-country team. They've got a big meet coming up this week. And uh, both teams qualified. And one of the greatest coaches in the entire area, if not the greatest coach in the entire yeah. area. I mean, the guy is very hes very mellow. He doesn't like to hear that said about him. He has a, a, a meet named after him. He's that good. But he takes these guys and girls all over the United States, and he wins no matter where he goes. You see these kids, it looks like, you know, they call them Hell's Angels on motorcycles. Yeah. That's what they look like running around town, that they have that many athletes running. And they take a lot of pride in what they do. And I want to throw my hat out there to Scott Hempen still on his team because, my goodness, they've accomplished a lot this year. And to be honest, he told me some of their best male runners are underclassmen. So it's not like they're losing a lot of people. Yes. But he said the seniors are who carry on the torch because they're teaching these younger kids this is how it's done, and let's go get it done. And, again, Hempen still is a great coach. And when, if someone could get me some information on when they're running, where they're running, and everything, I'd appreciate that so I could get that posted because I have a feeling they're going to do well at that meeting. Yes, definitely. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong if, if you're out there listening. Um I believe they went to a meet in Arkansas and won first place in that meet. So, yeah. and you know, great job by Coach Hippenstill. 
You know, and he, the cross-country program for Lockhart is not something to where they've had their years and up years. They've had their down years. They had every year they've accomplished something. You know, I, I believe we talked with the Larry Rodriguez earlier, and it was like maybe 23, 24, or, or I believe it was 28 out of the last 26 or 30 state championships, or not state championships, district championships. Yep. You know, and when you know when you're talking about high school sports to win two two district championship in a world in in a, in a row, you know it's it's a great feat. But when you could do it for that long, you know th- there's no way to describe that other than legendary. You know, and that's where that's the status that I put Coach Hippen still at as a legendary coach here in Lockhart because you know we've had good programs throughout the throughout the years with football. Uh, softball, you got basketball, you got soccer, but if you take that whole time frame where Coach Hippensteel has been at Lockhart High School running the cross country program until now, I mean, you, there's no way you can't put him in that upper class of legendary coaches that that been here in Lockhart High School. Period. Well, we've had some great interviews from the coaches. You know, I'm going to give Coach Bothy a hard time. She hates talking, <laughs> but she's done a good job with her interviews. Uh, we, we had a, an interview with the new head basketball coach, uh, Coach Torres. He had a good interview with us. And they're, they're not, their seasons are knocking around. I was talking to Ramos before the game. His boys are out there kicking the ball around mm-hmm. in the rain. And, and you know, their, their coach is great. And we had a lot of great coaches. you gotta, you got to kind of give a pat on the back to Sheila Henderson, our athletic director, for bringing in these quality coaches because they're, they're turning the, the programs around and, uh, you know, it helped to change districts. Yes. And the only district that is still, like, dominating tough is the one we're in in football. But we stand chan- a chance now to make playoffs in almost every sport that we have. Yes. And then you got Coach Honeycutt in baseball, who that program had struggled for a long time. And they were very close to making it to the playoffs last yes. year. So, anyways, your roaring band of Lockhart's getting ready to come on. So, we're going to turn our stuff off so you can listen to them. Please, Please. Welcome, welcome to the field, field. your 2018-2019 Lockhart High, High School Lioness. Under the direction of Miss Taylor Seymour, their lineups are led onto the field by Captain Alexia Bright, Co-Captain Elena Davila, Junior Lieutenant Precious Garcia, Junior Lieutenant Brianna Gonzalez, Social Officer Chelsea Rodriguez, Social Officer Bella Herman, Line out of the week is Ariana Sosa. This week, the line out will be performing a palm routine to hand clap.
Ladies and gentlemen, and now, entering the field of the Pride of Lockhart, the 2018 Warren Lion Bay. On behalf of the Lockhart Band Boosters, we would like to take this opportunity to recognize the following businesses for being platinum sponsors of the Roaring Lion Band. First, Lockhart National Bank. The San Marcos Treatment Center. Manny Gamages, Texas Hatters. Thank you for your continued support of the Lockhart Band. The UIL Sweepstakes Award winning Roaring Lion Band is led onto the field by drum majors Rosona Serrano and Tabitha Harris. Tonight, the Roaring Lion Band is proud to present its 2018 UIL contest show, The Sound of Color, featuring Painted Black from the Rolling Stones, Mozart's Ina Klein and Ockhuser, Carol Britton Chambers, one of many, Writings on the Wall from the James Bond movie Spectre, Stravinsky's Firebird, and Carol Britton Chambers' Wildfire. The saxophone solos are performed by Jaime Sosa, with musical arrangements by Carol Britton Chambers, percussion by Colin Cable, guard design by Jeffrey Sperling, and visual design by Luke Gall, we give you the sound of color.
All right, we're back here at Lockhart Stadium where it is still halftime. It's 42 to nothing. The Alamo Heights Mules are on top. Um, we did we did some walking, uh, watching of this band, and I'll tell you what, that was amazing. I know that they practice a lot, and they've done some really good things in the competitions and everything, but that was just fun to watch. I hadn't really had the time to sit and watch them through the halftimes before. That was amazing. If you folks have a chance to come to a game and uh, come watch a, some football at home, get to see these guys uh, perform at halftime, that was really amazing. Alamo Heights is on the field now with their dry ice and all. And Lockhart Lions are getting ready to take the field. Emilio, what do you got for us? I got the Meitler Storage Game Break for District 14 5A. Division two of games in the district. It is uh, halftime. It was Medina Valley 35, Uvalde Coyote 7, Kerrville Tyvee 48, Memorial Minutemen 0, and that's in the second quarter with 105 left to go. At halftime, it is Bernie Champion 27, Kennedy Rocket 0, and here at Lions Stadium is Alamo Height Mules 42, Lockhart Line 0, and uh, Scott, is one of the things that we mentioned, you know, first half is already done and gone. Second half, it's where you're going to determine whether you're going to just lay it out on the line and beat this team in the second half. You know, they might have won the first half, but you win the second half. And, you know, that's just the mentality that these lines are going to have to come out with. It's zero to zero. You know, it's a very tough uphill, uphill climb uphill when you're down 42 to nothing against a great team like Alamo Heights is. So this second half is going to be a lot of heart, a lot of determination to overcome what happened in the first half and, uh, you know, pretty much outscore Alamo Heights in the second half. Well, just a real quick shout-out again to our Lady Valiants volleyball team as they won 25-9, 25-9, and 25-7. Rudy Cadillo giving us the reports on that. That makes the girls now 11-2 and two in district play, and they'll be at home Tuesday against LBJ, and we'll give you that game Tuesday night. We'll go live at 6, and uh, the first serve will be at 6.30. And here comes the kick for the second half. It's a high kick. It's going to go to Jordan Garcia. He gets it at the 15. He's out to the 20. He jumps around, out to the 25, and he bulls his way across to the 30. We'll see where they mark him. Well, his name's not the baby bull for nothing. Nice return there by Jordan Garcia, the sophomore. So they're getting ready. Their coaches are trying to get them fired up. They're getting ready to go here. The ball is out to the least. The 30, I'm trying to see where they're going to put it. At the 30. So first and 10 at the 30-yard line. No Daquan Ellison out there. It's going to be a tight formation to start out the second half. They're shifting guys around. And here they go with the play. He's back to pass. He's looking to throw to Devin Clark, and he's way short on the pass. Yes, definitely. That's another thing that I had spoke with, that we had talked about last week. He did not have it. Jackie came out, didn't have a seat, his feet planted as he made the throw. It's more like he was backing up and trying to throw at the same time. And, you know, it's difficult for anybody to do that, especially, in, you know, you have NFL pro quarterbacks that have a difficult time doing that. So he just needs to settle down, get his feet set, and make the throw. Tight formation again, man in motion. They're going to go with Aldonia this time. No check, that's Jordan Garcia. He gets it out to about the 37, maybe the 38-yard line. Nice run there by Garcia. 11.35 and counting here in the third quarter. Picks up seven yards on the run, so it's going to be third down and three. He's got to be averaging close to five yards a carry. Yes, definitely. It's a, and it's a wonder that he's not being used more often. But like you said, when you got the, the dynamic duo and, whole, and Jesus Aldana out there, you know, it's very tough fighting for play for a playing time. 
Cortland Zambrano is out left. They're going to go to the right this time with Garcia. Garcia still going. He's out across the 40 for a first down. He And he gives the ball to the, the official. And uh, we move the sticks. Like I said, we may have found something in Jordan Garcia right here. Like I said, we, you know, we're seeing a sophomore in action right now and, you know, picks up 12 yards on two carries. And uh, Alex Thompson checks in. He'll be out wide left. Tight formation for everybody else. Man in motion. Pitch it out to uh, Daytron Ellison, who's out to the 45-yard line. A nice run by Daytron Ellison. And none other than <laughs> number 44, Carabin. Mackie Carabin there to clean the job up. He almost just runs diagonal to wherever the guys are headed. I t like I said, it, it's almost like he's in the huddle, reading out the, you know, getting the play call. And this guy has been everywhere, and he's done a great job for this defense of the Mules. Cortland Zambrano is out to the right. Tight formation, everybody else, man, in motion. They're going to hand it off up the middle. Again, Garcia is showing why he needs to be on the field as he picks up about four yards on the carry. It's third and one. The ball is just on the other side of midfield. Devin Clark's going to check in with the play. Four, uh, 9.50 to go. 42 to nothing, Alamo Heights. But Lockhart is moving the ball right now. Now, you got to know Alamo Heights' intensity is probably not as high as it was. But it's looking good right now. Man in motion. Hand off to Garcia again. And again, he gets another first down. He's going to be a tired boy at the end of the second <laughs> half. Great run over the left side as you're listening to the broadcast tonight. Lions are going right to left, and Alamo High is going left to right. So, you know, as uh, Jordan Garcia ran over the backside of the, guard, of the tackle and guard, you know, picked up the nice gain and first down for the Lions. Here we go, tight formation. Oh, Little miscommunication in the backfield. Jackie Edwards goes down. That was big, number 96. That is Larry Watts, a defensive lineman that made the tackle. That's going to be a loss of about seven four, yards. Seven. Yeah, Ooh, seven it was yards. seven. Ouch. So, just as we were moving the ball, they make a kind of a miscommunication in the backfield, and now we're we're long, second and fourteen here, eight forty-four and counting. Cortland Zambrano. Senior basketball player to the right. Everybody else type formation. They're going to pass, and he's in trouble, and he's going to go down. That was number 44 and number 45, so you have Carabin and Douglas in on the tackle. Another loss. Thoughts come to mind of yesteryear of what we could do right, say right now, but we're not going to go with that. <laughs> 8.05 to go here in the third quarter. We're going the wrong way right now. If my aunt is still listening, again, Donna, thank you for listening tonight. Thank you to the parents. Thank you to my wife and her family for being here. Ball ran up the middle by Daytron Ellis, and he's out across the 50-yard line. He's out to about the 46 of Alamo Heights. He actually gets us back to the original line of scrimmage. Great run by yes, Daytron Ellis. Definitely great run, and, uh, you know, Hard, brutal run for Daytron Ellison to be able to get back to the original line of scrimmage and it, where it makes it a fourth down at 10. And I don't see the punt team going in, so we're probably going to be seeing the lines going for it. So Coach Herman calls a timeout. He does call a timeout. Um, we'll go ahead and take a break. It's 7.23 to go into third quarter, 42 to nothing, Alamo Heights. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports through Vibe Magazine. Let First Lockhart National Bank reward you with First Star Rewards Checking, where you earn on your rewards checking balance, get free ATM refunds nationwide, plus so much more. Come on by one of our locations in Lockhart, Kyle, or South Austin to visit with one of our bankers to see how you can get started earning rewards today. You can also check us out online at firstlockhart.com. All right, we're back here at Lockhart Stadium. It's fourth and nine. Lockhart called a timeout with 7.23 to go here in the third quarter. Lions coming up with Salero, getting them to the to the line of scrimmage here. Got Looks like Cortland Zambrano again on the right side. 
They're going to throw it. And he's in trouble again. He's going to have to run. And there goes Jackie Edwards. He's down to the 40, down to the 30, to the 20. Jackie Edwards still moving. He's inside the 10, down to the 4-yard line. Jackie Edwards is going to be marked down at the 6. But the sophomore with a great run, a great read, great job by yes, Jackie Edwards. Definitely. Great job by Jackie Edwards to realize that nobody was wide open. And, you know, see the open field in front of him to tuck that ball in and get down the sideline to the six. Tight formation. They're going to hand it off to the little baby bull. Oh, good gravy. Guess who he ran into? He does move the ball down to the three-yard line, but their all-star, all-stud middle linebacker threw him to the ground. Second and goal. Well, they're going to mark him down at the two-yard line. I'm sure that that kid's family they they hate feeding that kid. <laughs> he is just huge and he moves well, so his metabolism's got to be high. There's the ball to Daytron Ellison. He's trying to side pedal his way into the end zone. They're asking for the touchdown, but he's down at the one yard line, so Daytron can't get in there. To be honest, at this point in time, I'm giving that ball to the baby bull, Jordan Garcia. He's put us down here. Yes, definitely. He's probably averaging about six yards a carry on this drive alone himself. A little naked bootleg with, with uh, Jackie might not be bad either because Jackie's a great runner. Here we go. They hand it off to the baby bull. He spins and dives in. Jordan Garcia, the sophomore, from one yard out. The Lions are on the board with 5.49 to go here in the third quarter. Great job for the Lockhart Lions to come out the gate here in the second half and take that ball down the field. Of course, a huge run that has set up this touchdown by Jackie Edwards of about 50 yards to get into the inside the red zone area. And uh, three, plays, three plays later, the Baby Bulls in the end zone for a touchdown for the Lions. Alfredo James is on for the extra point. Snap is back. The hold is down. The kick is up. And it is good. And with that, Lockhart finally put some points on the board with 549 left to go here in the third quarter. It is Alamo Heights 42, Lockhart Lions 7. And we'll take a quick break. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports through Bright Magazine. Meitler Storage is locally owned by Angela and Darren Meitler. Since 2002, Meitler Storage is just off Highway 142 in Maxwell, Texas, across from the Valero. For an appointment, call 512-398-7100. Your business is always appreciated. And a reminder, once a lion, always a lion. Go Lions! All right, we're back here at Lockhart Stadium again, as Emilio said. A nice drive, basically set up by the sophomore class between Garcia, Jordan Garcia. We're just gonna keep calling him the baby bull because he reminds of his, of his brother wearing the same jersey number. Runs just like his brother. Man, I'll tell you, Austin was good in the day. His little brother something else as well. Yes, definitely is. And on that scoring drive, it took 13 plays, six minutes and four seconds off the clock, and was uh, capitalized by a one yard touchdown plunge by Jordan Garcia. Do we see an onside kick? Why not? There it is. Boom. And we got it. We got it. That is number 16 diving on that ball. That is Ryan Ainsworth. A beautiful onside kick. So they're looking to see. The, I don't see no penalty flags. but I don't either. But they're, they're looking at an illegal touch. But I didn't see anybody illegally touch the ball. That should be our ball. This would be – they're going to give it to Alamo Heights. Yeah, and you can see Cole Charmer was saying he didn't touch the ball until he crossed the 50. I am – this – I, I got to say it. We've had three onside kicks, and we have gotten kind of hosed on all three of them because that should be our ball. They're going to say first and ten, Alamo Heights at the Lockhart 49-yard line. So they'll come out. And they've got all the starters still in, so here we go. One receiver to the right, to the left, or check that, to the right, one to the left, and they're going to put a guy in motion. They're going to hand it off to 
Zinaga. He's around the left side. He darts out to around the first down marker. Man, this guy is quick. He is. And that was number 32 there. That was a David Garcia on the tackle. So it's going to be second and about three. 525 and counting. I wondered why I could not see the print on the paper. Now I know why. <laughs> it's that new technology they call glasses. That's right. <laughs> Got my old man glasses on here. Second and three. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Zignaga in the backfield. He's going to get it right up the middle. Nice run again. He's out to the sticks. He gets ah, inside great the 40. Stop. Good job on the tackle. Number 38 there. That is Eli Green, the senior, who does a great job standing him up and getting the tackle, but they move the sticks. First and 10 from the 39-yard line of Lockhart, 450 and counting. There's going to be one receiver to the left, two to the right. The only thing I'm not seeing, and maybe, nope, I checked that. He's out there. I thought Nick Proctor wasn't on the field, but he is. Twins on each side for the receivers. They're going to hand it off to Zanga again, and he gets hammered. And the sophomore, number oh no, I checked that. That was a fumble on the play. Lockhart Lions will return. Faustino recovery. Gonzalez was back there to hammer him, and it was number six, Elijah Sanchez. Great job by the Lockhart Lions defense coming out, getting their first stop of the night. And their first turnover of the night against uh, the Alamo Height Mules offense. Well, we'll take it. We will definitely take it as we'll have it first and 10 at the 44-yard line. 43, check that. Tight formation for the Lions. They're going to hand it off to Detron Ellison around the left side. He gets it back up to the middle. He's to the 50. He's to the 40. Detron Ellison to the 30. Down to the 20. He's to the 10. He's brought down just inside the 10. Folks, I'm telling you what, if this team can catch Datron Ellison from behind, that's a fast defense. It definitely is, and he had a good lead, and he just got ran down from behind by a very, a very speedy linebacker right there. And it, or was it the cornerback that came from behind and got the tackle? But nonetheless, Lockhart with a huge gain on the first play of the second drive here in the second half. So it's at the first and goal at the nine-yard line. Solero brings him to the line of scrimmage, tight formation. They're going to give it up the middle to, oh, good gosh. Garcia didn't get much there. I think they got used to him running. Yes, definitely. It's going to get back to the line of scrimmage, so it's, they're not going to lose yardage. But it is going to be second down and go to go from the nine. So they're waiting for the play to come in. It's going to be number 29, Pavel Rivero bringing it in. We have 330 and counting, 42 to 7. Alamo Heights on top, but Lockhart's knocking on the door again after getting a fumble recovery. They give it to Garcia again. Garcia jumps inside. He's going into the end zone. And Garcia away. from nine yards out and a touchdown. Baby Bowl carrying on the family tradition. Austin Garcia comes in and lives up to his big brother's nickname, the Baby Bull, and just bulled his way from about the five yard line all the way into the end zone for another line touchdown. So Zignaga had all their touchdowns. Garcia has all of ours. Alfredo Jamez is on for the extra point. And the Lion crowd starting to get into the game here. <laughs> the snap is back to hold it down. The kick is up. And it is good just like that with uh, eight minutes into the contest here in the second half it is Alamo Heights, Alamo Heights Mules 42, Lockhart Lions 14. And we'll go and take a quick break and be right back to you. You're listening to the Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports through Bright Magazine. Has been Lockhart's premier collision repair and auto body shop since 1967. Certified iCar Standard, the highest ranking in the collision industry. For all your collision needs, come by and see Johnny and Sons, 400 Blackjack in Lockhart. Johnny and Sons, paint box, we won't up. steer you wrong. <laughs> <Get him by. laughs> all right, we're back here at Lockhart Stadium. I decided, because I'm very superstitious, that the second half I was going to sit down. 
I have sat down and we have scored 14 unanswered points. I'm going to stay seated until anything gets crazy and changes. We haven't done this. Well, actually, we've only done this three times tonight. We're kicking off again. So this is good stuff. So what turned out to be a very ugly first half has turned into a very good second half for Lockhart. It'll be Eduardo Ponce kicking it off. And another onside kick. And they recovered. Oh, and now there's fights. Now there's a fight. Now there's flags. And Coach is telling his team to get off the field. The coaches are throwing their players back to the sidelines. Again, I know I'm for the Maroon team, but this was all started in the first half with all that taunting that went on. Yes. It's one thing to beat a team, but when you start shoving it in their face, they're going to get a little tired of it. Curry is not happy right now. No, he's not. In that last touchdown drive, let me go and go to the, the drive scenario. It was a minute 14 seconds off the clock. Took three plays, capped off by a five-yard touchdown run, or a nine-yard touchdown run by uh, Jordan Garcia. And you know what's got the last two play, two drives for the Lockhart Lions? There was two 48-yard runs on each drive that set up the touchdown scores, both of them. Of course, Jackie Edwards Jr. had a great run, and we finally got to see the speed that he carries with them as he was able to scamper down the field for 48 yards, which that that drive ended with the 15-yard, with the one-yard touchdown run by Jordan Garcia. So they called on sportsmanlike conduct on Alamo Heights. The Alamo Heights coach went crazy. And he's throwing something. The team is not happy. But again, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm calling what I'm seeing. That taunting, there's no place for it. Throwing bombs when you're up 40-some points, there's no place for it. We've had enough. And, you know, it's kind of karma. So they're going to back them up. Alamo Heights will get the ball. They're up 42-14 to 14 with 3.14 to go here in the third quarter. But now the Jaws music is being played. And it's going to go all the way back to the 32-yard line of Alamo Heights. Now we'll see if Alamo Heights responds because their entire team and coaching staff were furious about that call. It's going to be another huge test for the Lockhart Lions defense. See if they can come up with two stops in a row. So we got three receivers to the right, one to the left. Zignaga in the backfield with Anderson. And they're going to come out throwing. And they're looking deep. And they're going to Aaron Proctor, and he dropped it. And they're going to call a penalty. The penalty is going to be called on number 20, and we don't have a number 20 in our book. So that, yep, that, okay, we just had McKelty tell us that's one of the freshmen they brought up for tonight's game. Okay. Can you tell us what his name is? No? Okay. Hey, <laughs> can, can, you, can you run all the way down there and find out who that kid is? Because I don't want to run down there. I asked Emilio if he if wanted I me could, to find if, out. If I could go down there and come back, by the time that happens, this game will be, will over. be over. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm guessing they're, yeah, they called the penalty on us. I kind of figured it was coming that way. It is now first and ten, and it's going to be at, my goodness, that's a long ways, the 47-yard line. First and ten, 47 for Alamo Heights. They're going to have three receivers to the right again. Nick Proctor by himself on the left. Shotgun formation the way it's been all night long. Hand off to Zig Naga up the middle. He bounces to the outside. Alex Sosa with a great defensive play there. Only got a couple that time. Great stop by Sosa in the backfield. To, well, they hit him in the backfield, but Zanaga is just a quick and tough player or running back who was able to pick up another a yard on the game, but not before he was hit hard and tackled. Second and nine from the 48-yard line. Nick Proctor on the left. Everybody else is on the right. They're going to throw to Nick. He makes the catch, and he gets great brought down. Great tackle. Daytron Ellison with a great tackle at the 49-yard line of Lockhart. As Emilio said, great defensive play. 
touchdown. Brings it up third down and five for the Alamo Height Mules. So I'm guessing we made them mad when we scored two touchdowns, and they're trying to get back on the board here. 2-12 to go here in the third quarter, 42-14 Alamo Heights. They're going to throw again. They're looking for Nick again, and he hits him. He's still on his feet, and he gets it down to about the 35-yard line, move the sticks. They're going to call an official's timeout, but that is a first down. So first and 10 at the 35-yard line of Lockhart. 1.55 to go here in the third quarter. The clock is moving. But like Emilio and I talked about, it was about pride in the second half, and so far the pride is showing for your Lockhart Lions as they scored all 14 points here in the second half. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. The one on the left is Nick Proctor. They're going to hand it off to Nick Hossen at the middle. <laughs> Good lordy. That is the tongue Zignaga up, up the middle. Second and eight. If this guy doesn't go pro just because of his last name, I'll be surprised. <laughs> well, usually it's guys that do have, when they have last names like that, they go pro. If nothing else, maybe running in the Olympics as a sprinter. I don't know. They're going to roll out right with Reed Anderson. He's going to carry it all by himself. He's not going to get the first down, but he does get a good chunk of yardage. That's going to make it third down and short for the Mules. We're stopped at 59 seconds. I'm guessing about a yard, maybe two short of the first down. They're going to say more than that. Good gravy. It's third and three, almost four. So we got a single – no, we got twin receivers to the right, uh, left, a single receiver to the right. Aaron Carter by himself on the right side, handoff up the middle, and they do a good job of stopping him. It's going to be close. Nice tackle there by That's number 61, a, Sammy Yabara. Yeah, it's going to be enough for a mule first down. A great tackle up front for Sammy Obaro. So first and 10 at the 26-yard line of Lockhart. They're moving the ball, but we're making them take some time off the clock while they do it. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Aaron, Carter, or Aaron Proctor out here on the right. They're going to hand off Zignaga at that outside. He's going to go around the left, and he's going to get some good yardage on this carry to the left side. Again, not standing up, I really can't see where he went out at. Right. And, you know, I tell you what, you know, at the dynamic wide, wide receiver group that they have in the Proctor brothers, you know, they've only made their presence felt maybe three, four times in this contest. It's, but it's Zanaga that's done the done the workload for the offense of the Alamo High Mules as the clock hit zero for the end of the third quarter. So that's the end of your third quarter, Alamo Heights. Mules 42, your Lockhart Lions 14. We're going to take a commercial break. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports with Fight Magazine. Hello, Americans. Mark Twain said, a broken promise is better than no promise at all. Well, you and I both know when we make a promise, we keep it. Chuck Nash Auto Group has been doing that for years. They offer up the kind of one-on-one -on -one service that will follow the taillights of your pre-owned vehicle deep into that gorgeous Texas sunset. By the way, Chuck Nash will give you $750 more for your car, buy, or trade. Now you know the best of the story. All right, we're back here at Lockhart Stadium. Going to let Emilio do some checking in on his stuff here. All right, once again, this is the Meitler Storage Game Break. In Medina Valley with 729 left to go in the third quarter. All over Uvalde, 42-7. to Tyvee all over the Minutemen of Memorial with 34 seconds left to go in the third quarter. It's 55 to 0. They still have it at halftime there at Champion with a score of 27 to 0. Champion charges over the Rockets. And here at Lions Stadium is Alamo Height Mules 42, Lockhart Lions 14. So it's two receivers to the left. They're going to hand it to Zignaga at the left side. He's just going to go through a cloud of dust. He gets it down to about the 17 yard line. 
And it looked like Alex Sosa and Faustino there on the tackle. So it's third and about two, a long two. The crowd is yelling defense. And like we said, if it was about pride in the second half, and so far Lockhart has shown plenty of pride as they've scored all 14 points in the second half. As a matter of fact, this is a really quick second half, thanks to us running the clock down. <laughs> Two receivers to the left, one in motion, going to the right. They're going to hand it off to him, and there's number 12 making a huge tackle. They're going to call the horse collar, though. And Juan Ramirez made a great tackle, but it was of the horse collar variety. So even though he went down for a loss, they're going to be moving the sticks, I have a feeling. It just isn't fair when you're shorter than the guy you're trying to tackle. <laughs> Especially when the guy can run about three times faster than a cheetah. So Devin Clarkson to check in. Garcia checked himself out. Something wrong with him. The band trying to get people into the game. And what I'm liking here is uh, Ryan Ainsworth, a senior, trying to get people into the, into the game. He's been very energetic most of the night tonight. 11-11 to go here in the fourth quarter, 42-14. to Alamo Heights on top. It was of the horse color variety, so they will move the sticks. It's going to be first down and goal to go for the Alamo Heights Mules at the line, nine-yard line. A big feather in the cap would be to be able to stop these guys without scoring any points. And there's a timeout. So with 11.09 to go here in the fourth quarter, 42-14 to 14, Alamo Heights, we'll take a break. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMX Sports with Fight Magazine. Meitler Storage is locally owned by Angela and Darren Meitler. Since 2002, Meitler Storage is just off Highway 142 in Maxwell, Texas, across from the Valero. For an appointment, call 512-398-7100. Your business is always appreciated. And a reminder, once a lion, always a lion. Go Lions! All right, we're back here at Lockhart Stadium. I hope Tanya Lloyd was able to get on here and hear us. She was having trouble. Getting, uh, we kept going in and out of service on her uh, computer system. Um, my mother tells me that she's been able to hear the whole game, so I, I don't know what's going on there, but hopefully Tanya was able to get back on and hear the game because it's been all Lockhart here in the second half. Alamo Heights is knocking on the door, but for the most part, it's been all Lockhart. Yes, it has. Lockhart scored twice so far. And that's one thing we talked about. You know, you lost the first half. Come out and win the second half, you know, Give yourself a moral victory in that. And so far, Lockhart Lions have come out. They've scored twice. They've recovered a fumble, and, you know, taking the ball away from the Alamo High Mule, stopping them, and then taking the ball down to score again. Reed Anderson, shotgun formation. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Going to give it to Nixaga up the middle. He's going to the right side, and he's trying to get his fifth touchdown. He's in inside the five, down to about the three. Now, we're in the fourth quarter. It's 42-14. to 14. This would be about the time you say, uh, hey, some of the backups need to be playing, I would think. Because you're going to be kicking yourself if any one of those superstar offensive guys gets hurt at yes. this stage of the game. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. They're going to hand it up the middle to Nazaga. He's going to try to get his way into the end zone. He cannot get there. He's and short. They, no, they're going to mark him in, into the end zone for they another did. touchdown. Wow. I didn't think he got there. So he did get in. And that was from three yards out. So he scores his fifth touchdown of the game here with 10.28 to go in the fourth quarter. So as we wait, a, the extra point right now is 48-14, to 10.28 left to go here in the third quarter. Ellis will be coming in to kick the extra point try for the Mules. This is actually the kid that kicks off. This isn't Ellis. This is number 17, Travion Golday. The snap is back. The hold is down. The kick is up. And it is no good as yeah, Alamo Heights right. Mules missed their first extra point of the contest. So it will remain the score. Alamo Heights 48, Lockhart Lions 14, 10-28 left to go into the fourth quarter. And we'll take a quick break. 
You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports through Bright Magazine. You can tell the pitmasters are making the magic happen every time you walk through the doors of Christ's Market. The delicious smell of smoked meats greets your every visit. Not going to be in Lockhart for a while? Christ's Market ships nationwide. Stop by Christ's Market at 619 North Colorado in Lockhart or find us on the web, Christmarket.com. That's K-R-E-U-Z market.com. No sauce, no forks, just good taste naturally. All right, we're back here at Lockhart Stadium. It will be, uh, of course, um, oh, no, no, we got him. So it looks like they have number nine, Caleb Jennings, and then it's going to be the first time I get to say this is Hey Sal. Is that correct? Hey so. Hey so. Hey so. Thank you. Don't get to call his <laughs> name much, but he's on the field now. Hey so Morales, the junior, is back there to receive as well. They've moved Aldonia. And uh, looks like the baby bull Garcia up where the dynamic duo usually are. So we're starting to put other people into the game. There's a high kick, and it's caught. Was that Daquan Ellison? No, it was not. No, that was number George, George, George Renteria, Renteria, one of the guys we interviewed. Mr. Talkative. So I don't know. Would we call that an onside kick? It wasn't uh, it? Like a half a pooch kick. Yeah, I was. We'll get the ball to uh, 45 <laughs> yard line. I'm not real sure why, but we'll take the yardage. Yes, definitely. So first and ten at the 45 yard line of Lockhart, tight formation. Oh goodness, Daytron Ellison just got hammered, and guess who hit him? It was number 45 who grabbed him. That being Douglas. And Carabin finished him off. Second and ten. Devin Clark, the 6'5 basketball player, coming in as a wide receiver. Ten minutes and counting here in the fourth quarter. I'd like to see Lockhart get on the board again. Clark goes split left. Tight formation, everybody else. Right up the middle to Garcia. He's going to pick up about two, maybe three. <laughs> That's funny right there. They're going to give them two yards. Samaripa just picked up one of their guys. Now, Samaripa would be fit in just fine with their offensive line. And Samaripa picked up one of their linemen, being nice. But he picked him up in a bear hug. <laughs> Third and eight. Gosh. Well, you, could, you could tell by his interview, he's, he's some character. He is. <laughs> Tight formation, man in motion. They're going to go to... Uh, Aldonia this time. He's only going to get about a yard. They were trying to uh, fake him out with Daytron around the outside. Going to be fourth and about seven. Nine minutes and counting. This has been one fast second half. And mainly because Lockhart's dominated possession. Yes, they have. There's going to be a huge fourth down play for the Lions so they could extend his drive. They're going to throw. Jack Edwards rolls out right. He throws it down to Cortland, which he got tripped up. That should have been a flag. Coach is wanting to flag. The crowd's wanting to flag. I want a flag, but they're not going to throw one. He tripped him as he was trying to catch the ball. It goes incomplete, so they'll turn it over on downs. So it'll be first and 10 for Alamo Heights at the 47-yard line of Lockhart with 8.40 to go here in the fourth quarter. 48-14. Yeah, definitely. It. You know, it, they, I think they might have looked at it and saw maybe it was incidental contact, but definitely the defender for Alamo Height Mules had his left arm draped around Cortland Zambrano's uh, left shoulder. So we're going to go the other way with it now. Hopefully we'll be able to keep him out of the end zone. We got some new people on the field. Number 42 is the quarterback. That is Campbell. Campbell's going to hand it off. I'll see who the runner is in just a moment. Stacked up there for no gain. And that is number 28 running the ball. That's Joe Ramirez, a sophomore running back. Yeah, I like to see, like, Eli Green came up after the tackle, and, you know, he waved his hands like, no, no, no more. You know, you're not getting this from us. You know, they still got that intensity and that fire. That's what I like to see. Nobody's hanging their heads down after they make a tackle and just, 
Oh, well. But, you know, a great job by Eli Green to come up and, you know, show some uh, some emotion, some spirit. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. They're going to hand it off to uh, Campbell again. He's going to cut back to the left. He's down to the 40. He's outside to the 35 where he'll run out of bounds, and he's shoved out of bounds. Thank goodness they didn't throw a flag on that. Number 28. Oh, I take that. That's Joe Ramirez. It's Campbell at quarterback. So this line right here is much smaller than the line they had on the field. Yeah, great job for number 20 for the Lockhart Lions. Was able to run the, the running back out of bounds. Unfortunately, that's another one of those freshmen that we don't have numbers and names for. Yeah, thank you, McElton. First to <laughs> 10 at the 20 or 35-yard line. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Campbell, the quarterback, hands it off to Ramirez, who's going to get stuffed at maybe a gain of one. I think they're going to give him forward progress for one yard. But once again, like we talked about, the sophomores getting the the huge chunk of amount of playing time here in the second half. Here we got a freshman at number 20. I wish I had his name, McKelty, but, it, you know, we got a <laughs> freshman going out there getting some playing time to where, you know, it's going to it's gonna be big for this young man as he gets into a sophomore, junior, and senior years because with all the experience that he's getting now, the game time. He's not the only one. There's another one that's been playing that I don't know the number two. So here they are. Campbell, number 42. That's a quarterback number you don't see every day. And he'll hand it off to Ramirez, who's going to go around the left side. He cuts it back, back out to the outside again. He gets stopped. He's going to gain about three on the play. They're going to say four yards on the play. So third and six. And number 20 made the stop. Curry Curry is either <laughs> tackling or hugging Devin Clark. I don't know if he's calming him down or giving him five or what, but he had a big old bear hug on him. Well, I saw coming through the line, Devin Clark had a beat on him, and just uh, the running back was able to cut back up and get a couple of more yards. And So it is third and six, three receivers to the right, one to the left. Campbell, the quarterback. He's going to roll out right. He's going to pitch it to Ramirez to the right. Ramirez just gets hammered. Great stop. Good job by the defense there. And again, Juan Ramirez gets in the backfield. He's not a big guy, but he's getting back there and making some, doing some havoc damage back there. Cameron Jackson also on the field. Yeah, Fourth comes, and nine. Here comes Devin Clark back out to the field. He's going to get Garcia off. That is of the David Garcia variety. Now Devin Clark is the tallest guy on the field for the first time tonight at six foot five. <laughs> two receivers to the right. Check that. Three receivers to the right, two to the left. And they're going to call timeout. Timeout, Alamo Heights. 5.37 to go in the ballgame. It's 48 to 14. We'll take a break right here. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports through Vibe Magazine. Johnny & Sons Pain Body has been Lockhart's premier collision repair and auto body shop since 1967. Certified iCar Standard, the highest ranking in the collision industry. For all your collision needs, come by and see Johnny & Sons 400 Blackjack in Lockhart. Johnny & Sons Pain Body, we won't steer you wrong. And we're back here at Lockhart Stadium. Thank you, McKelty. 5.37 to go in the game, <laughs> McKelty and... Emilio are over here having a fight. I'll just take over here with the fourth and nine. I'll let you know how the fight ends. Gosh, you're getting all kinds of fights this I week. know, and I? A lot of people want to take jabs at me. Put your headphones on. So it's fourth and nine. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Campbell, number 42, the quarterback. And there's another running back, I think. I can't tell if that's the same running back or not. He's built like him. It is him. They're going to give it to him. He's going to go to the right side. There's a flag down. He's it's gonna... in the backfield, too. Yep. He gained about three, two or three, but I think it may be going back. I just declined it because they did not get the first down. We will get the ball back on possession, but it depends on the penalty here. We'll see what the guy with the white hat has to say. And they're calling it on us. Offsides on the defense. Hmm. 
interesting. Well, it's not a first down. They'll get another shot at fourth down here. It's now fourth and three. Maybe four. Yeah, we'll call it four. Yeah. 5.30 to go in the ballgame. 48-14 Alamo Heights. But Lockhart's winning the second half 14-6. to six. I guess if Euchre was calling football, it was just a bit offside. Yes, it was. So we have two receivers to the right, one to the left. Campbell, number 42, the quarterback. Ramirez right behind him. They're going to hand it off to Ramirez. Oh, that's not Ramirez. That's a different guy. It's going to be stuffed in the backfield. Yep, he is. That was number 85, Edward DeWees, <clears throat> a sophomore tied in. Lockhart will get it on turnover of downs. So we'll see what the Lockhart Lions can do against which which is what I'm going to guess is their backup defense now. Yeah, I mean, but you, you look at it, you know, Lockhart is playing with a lot of sophomores, a lot of uh, players that uh, that wouldn't be starting in the game, and they're doing an excellent job against the second team of Alamo High. So, you know, we do still have some starters out there, and Jackie Edwards, we got Daytron Ellison, we got a couple of other players out there, but, they, you know, you win the battle in the second half. So they're going to throw. They're going to go to the baby bull. He throws it just out of his reach. It'll go second and ten. A nice fake up the middle. He rolled out right. He tried to hit uh, Jordan Garcia, but it was just out of his reach. Yes, and that was one of those plays right there to where uh, Jackie Edwards was running backwards. Did it, he set his feet? He just didn't trust his arms and make his arm and make the throw. It wasn't that strong of a throw. And uh, it showed it, it didn't stick to the hands of the baby bull. So, a receiver out left. They're going to go up the <coughs> middle there. Oh, <coughs> Garcia, he's still on his feet. He's out to about the 40-yard line. That's where they'll mark him down at the 40. He's going to be a yard shy of the first down. Baby bull Jordan Garcia, not oh. Austin Garcia. It's Jordan Garcia carrying the torch for his brother. Yes, great run. He got stood up right around the 36-yard line, was able to spin out of it and pick up four more yards to make it a manageable third down and one. So third and one, tight formation here. Let's see what we run this time. Oh, goodness. Oh. And he got too excited. It looked like he was getting the ball again. So we're going to go third and six. And that usually happens when you know you're getting the ball and you're, you've you already got a big run the play before. You know, he just got a little carried away with himself. But bad thing, it moves him back five yards. Now it's third down and six instead of third down and one. Ah, but we're going for it anyways on fourth down, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> we're, we'll get this six yards. So Definitely. Baby Bull is, like I said, averaging about five, six yards of carry here in the second half. Tight formation for the Lockhart Lions in their slot team and in motion. They're going to pitch it to Daytron Ellison, who's out to the outside. He gets it up the middle. He's across the first down. He gets it out to the 43-yard line. A great run by Daytron Ellison. <laughs> You look over here at the far end, number 30, Noah Garcia took his blocker all the way down to the 35-yard line deep in <laughs> Alamo Heights territory. <laughs> Great job by Garcia. And, you know, he's one of the guys that at the beginning of the season, the first two games, he did some excellent blocking up front for Jesus Aldana and Daquan Ellison. First and 10 from the 43-yard line. They're going to give it up the middle to, oh, my gosh, who's that? That is Noah. Noah Garcia is down to the 20. Noah Garcia trips over his feet. <laughs> But he's inside the 10. Noah Garcia, out of nowhere, takes it up the middle of the field. The sophomore class making a statement here tonight. And the crowd is loving it. So am I. Great run by Noah Garcia. Get all the way down, you know, for another huge run for the Lockhart Lions. So the sophomore class is saying, guys, watch out. We're going to be here for a while. It's first and goal from the 10-yard line. Tight formation for the Rockets. Oh, goodness. That was botched from the very beginning. And they they recovered the fumble. That's what I thought. So we lose the ball on the 10-yard line. On a, I don't even think the ball got to uh, quarterback's hands. So they're going to get the ball back. Well, it was a good job of moving the ball down there. 331 to go in the game. That's unfortunate. I would have liked to have seen his get on the board one more time. The crowd is still here. They're still making noise. That's good. K 
Campbell will bring them back out, and he's got the big tall tight end behind him again. That's number 85, DeWeese. And they'll hand it off to DeWeese. He's going to run it up the middle, and he gets stacked up there. So it's going to be second and eight. 3.15 and counting here in the fourth quarter. 48-14, Animal Heights. Well, here's a little stat. The two touchdown drives the Lockhart Lions had, they each contained, consisted of a 48-yard run, one by Jackie Edwards, another one by uh, Daytron Ellison. Noah Garcia rushes for a 47-yard gain, but Lockhart ends up fumbling on the next play. Campbell under or behind the center here. DeWeese gets the handoff. He's going to go around the right side. He's still on his feet. He's out to about the 20. He's very close to the first down. So we'll see where they mark him. I want to say it's about third and one. Nope, third and two. 226 and counting. And like we talked at halftime, this second half was about pride. This second half was about winning the second half. And that's yes. exactly what we've done. It's 14-6. to six. Now, granted, they put their second string in on offense. But still, we are winning the second half. And that was with their starters out there. Yes. So they do, do not get the first down. But I'm not real sure what's going on with the line there. Sticks. No, they do pick up the oh, first down. Oh, they do get the first down. Okay, I was wondering what the sticks were doing. They confuse me at times. <laughs> You're supposed to stay with the referee as he moves you, but okay. 202 and counting. We may be looking at the final score of 48 to 14. Unless we can get a turnover here. Because they're just trying to run the clock out. Yeah, Lockhart does have one timeout to burn. I'm pretty sure they would like to get the ball back to try and at least score at least one more time before the end of the contest. Showing a blitz. We'll see. Hand off to DeWeese. He's going to break it to the left side. He's got some room. What Great a tackle. tackle. Great tackle. Number six. No. No, that was Galindo on the tackle. Nice tackle there by Jared Galindo. Loses two. See, and Jerry Galindo is another player that we wouldn't see, you know, wouldn't be getting much playing time, you know, as he has in the, you know, the previous weeks. But tonight he's coming in and he made a great open field tackle on a huge running back. They got a huge boat, huge guy back there in the backfield running the ball for the Antlers now. I mean, for the, for the Mules. He's only a tight end back there, so, oh goodness, that was botched. Like it's going to be a legal procedure on the offense unless. Because the uh, quarterback never got the Oh, they're calling the offsides on the defense. But the quarterback never got the What are you guys talking about? Let's see here. Well, one, the main officials saying procedure, but they're moving them up. So your guess is as good as mine at this point in the game. 47 seconds and counting. Second and seven. This could be the last play of the game. And that will probably be the case as they're running the clock down. He takes the knee. Takes the knee. That'll about do it. And that's, yeah, they're going to do it. It looks like they're going to run out the rest of the 25 seconds left on the clock. So the final score is Alamo Heights, Mules 48, your Lockhart Lions 14. We'll take some a commercial break. We'll talk a little bit about who's going to be the offensive player of the game and who's going to be the defensive player of the game. We'll come back with that. We'll give our closing thoughts, and we'll call it a night. So we'll let McKelty take it away. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports through Vibe Magazine. Let First Lockhart National Bank reward you with First Star Rewards Checking, where you earn on your rewards checking balance, get free ATM refunds nationwide, plus so much more. Come on by one of our locations in Lockhart, Kyle, or South Austin to visit with one of our bankers to see how you can get started earning rewards today. You can also check us out online at firstlockhart.com. 
For over 15 years, rain and drywall and paint has been serving Lockhart and the surrounding counties. We are experienced in all phases of construction. You can count on us for any exterior or interior painting job. Call 512-925-0634 to schedule an appointment with rain and drywall and paint today. Chisholm Trail Barbecue features slow-cooked brisket, hot sausage, beef, and pork ribs done the right way. In town famous for barbecue, Chisholm Trail is where the locals come to eat. Visit Chisholm Trail Barbecue, 1323 South Colorado in Lockhart, and come by after the game. Chisholm Trail Barbecue stays open until midnight after every home football game. Let First Lockhart National Bank reward you with First Star Rewards Checking, where you earn on your rewards checking balance, get free ATM refunds nationwide, plus so much more. Come on by one of our locations in Lockhart, Kyle, or South Austin to visit with one of our bankers to see how you can get started earning rewards today. You can also check us out online at firstlockhart.com. Ah. And we are back here. It is a final here at Lions Stadium. They've already took the score off the scoreboard. It was uh, Alamo Height Mules 48, your Lockhart Lions 14. But as we spoke about here at the halftime show at the Johnny and Sons Payton half, uh, Body Johnny and Sons Payton Body Shop halftime show, now we're in the first Lockhart National Bank post game show. And uh, one thing we talked about at halftime, Scott, is you know come out. We've already lost the first half. Come out. Give yourself a more victory and outscore the Alamo Height Mules in the second half, and that's, that's exactly what happened. As you know, they were only able to score one more time to add to their total for the Mules, but Lockhart was able to get across into the end zone twice on their first two possessions of the second half. And with that, you know, it's a moral victory, 14 to six. Despite the second teamers are going at it here in the second half, but they still had the first team out there for at least two series in the second half, and they came away with no points against our second teamers. So, you know, it's a huge moral victory for the Lockhart Lions, but a crushing defeat in that now they're really going to have to run the table the rest of the way if they're going to want to have any chance of making it to the playoffs this year. And uh, they got we got Kennedy coming up next week in San Antonio, and then following that we got Kerrville Tyvee here at home which is going to be against another very tough team. You know, a great quarterback in Valverde, and, you know, he's back after a four-year starter on the freshman, you know, on the varsity team. So it's going to be a tough, it's going to be a tough task to accomplish to finish out the rest of the season with wins on every single game. But this Lockhart Lions team just came against a, a very tough uh, Alamo Height Mules team, and just like in Bernie Champion, first few minutes got away from them, and, a huge lead that we were unable to get out from. Yeah, that's true. And, uh, you know, we're, again, I, I take this as a, a, a great second half for us. Coach is not going to be happy at the first half. But, again, how do you stop a team that is, was almost as, as efficient as a lot of the great NFL offenses that we see on Sundays? They were so efficient, there was no stopping them. It didn't matter what we did, they weren't stopping us. In the second half, we came out, I think they had lost their – their uh, desire and we came out with desire and we outplayed them and so I, I, my, I applaud the Lockhart Lions coaching staff for getting the team focused and getting themselves back into the game and you know 48 to 14 getting them back in the game that's that's my opinion you know yes but uh but anyways we held them to six in the second half we scored 14 I'm taking that as a win in the second half the offensive player of the game I think is pretty evident and, you know, as we were getting ready to come back online, I, I, I honestly, I've got to go to a senior captain in Alex Sosa as our uh, defensive player of the game because he made some good plays. He, he was out there battling, and I could almost, as a matter of fact, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it. I'm going to say Alex Sosa is the se uh, senior captain defensive player of the game, but I'm going to throw a, a teammate in there with him. Another guy who did some damage up front, and that was Eliza Sanchez. I felt like those two guys were probably our defensive players of the game because there wasn't a lot of defense out there because of the way they moved the ball. But those were my picks for defensive player of the game. I'm going to let you go yeah. with the offensive player Great of the game. job for uh, picking the, the Farm Bureau defensive player of the game and Alex Sosa and Eliza Sanchez. As for the Chuck Nash offensive player of the game, 
We're going to hand it over to uh, the baby bull, Jordan Garcia. He came in in the second half after Daquan Ellison left the, left the game, and he did an outstanding job. He was a, a, a brutal, tough runner, just like his older brother was in the last couple of years. And uh, Jordan Garcia was able to get into the end zone twice for the Lockhart Lions. And for his efforts, he's uh, he's going to be awarded the the Chuck Nash Offensive Player of the Game. And for a sophomore to come out and get that recognition, that's a great thing because we still have him for two and a half more years. And it, it, it's, it's going to be amazing to see this young man grow as well as the other sophomores and the young freshman that we didn't get his name, McKelty, but – we, you know, we got to see some up and comers, and not just the number twenty, the freshman. We they were had a couple other freshmen out there on the field too. But, you know, it's the second half was probably gonna was the more important portion of tonight's ball game. First half got away from the Lockhart Lions. The second half, how are you gonna react? How are you gonna come out? Are you gonna hang your heads? Are you gonna, you know, just give up? And that's something that the Lockhart Lions didn't do. And, you know, these young guys that are coming in. The sophomores, they stepped up, and they were able to score two times, hold the first string offense to no, you know, to they didn't score not one time in the second half. It was the second string of the of the def- of the of the mules that were able to get across into the goal line late in the, I mean, early in the fourth quarter, but couldn't do anything more after that. So you know, hats off to the mules. They came in, executed perfectly in the first half, did what they had to do to keep the lines in check for the second half. And uh, they came out with a win. They they earned tonight's victory, and uh, in, a, in you know in a in a how can I put it in a you know they didn't smash the lines, but they just worked their their game plan to a T offensively and defensively. And when you got a defensive player like Carabell, I mean, golly, what I mean, what more can you do? I mean, I, I you know I like to see the battle between Carabell and the big running back they have from Medina Valley. You know, I, that's the match that I want to see right there. That would th- that would be two bulls running at each other to see who doesn't get the concussion. I mean, yes. that's crazy. And like like Emilio said, this is one of the scariest offenses we have in our district. This was good football if you're an Alabama Heights fan because these kids did it. They they put it to us. I'm just proud of the Lockhart Lions for their comeback. So I guess that's what we have there. We're going to get the scores real quick around the area, and then we'll do some closing comments, and we'll call it a night. Yes, definitely. And the last Meitler storage game break of the night, it's uh, Tyvee Antlers over Memorial Minutemen, 55 to nothing. Here at Lions Stadium, it was Alamo Height Mules, 48, Lockhart Lions, 14. Medina Valley with 503 left to go in the contest. It is 42 to 14 over the Coyotes. And there's been no change for the champion charging game. It's still marked at halftime, so I don't know the exact score they have right now, but right now at the halftime point is the champion Chargers 27, Kennedy Rockets 0, and uh, I don't have the final score on that one, but you know if they're up that much, it couldn't have been pretty the rest of the way. So. That is true. Well, want to give a shout-out again to our QA, the Rockin' Rev, Randy Fry. Randy, we sure miss you, man. Thank you very much for what you do. Want to give a shout out to Mikkel Tialtier, our senior producer. Yes. She does a great job. Yay. She's actually even talking more. We couldn't even get her to talk or breathe into the mic early in the year. Yeah. Well, she's talking she's more because she got her mic off. Oh, oh you yeah. need to turn your mic on. It was on when I was talking okay. earlier. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we, we've, we've turned her into a deadly monster yeah. up here. Um, she's doing a great job for us. Definitely, we appreciate definitely. her. I want to give a shout-out to my man, the Sarge, Emilio. What? Emilio. He does it. He does it. I tell you what, don't mess with Emilio. He is the man. He is the man. The man, the myth, the legend. There you go. And then for myself, Scott Smith, the play-by-play guy, we sure appreciate everybody that listens, especially give a shout-out to my Aunt Donna Cock in Topeka, Kansas, if you're still listening, to my parents and their two mutts over there in San Marcos, Texas, <laughs> and anybody else in my family that was listening. Yeah. We sure appreciate it. Thank you very much. Good night, and we will uh, see you Tuesday. Yes, definitely. I want to give one last shout-out to my oldest, my oldest granddaughter. She turned eight today. I'll be home, baby girl, here in a little bit to finish eating some more cake. And as, long as, as, as Scott said, he goes, good night, God bless, and see you all next week when we're in San Antonio. All right.